Disguise? I was wearing my disguise, but I'm just not very good in heels. No one must know we're down here doing this. I'm sorry. Well, it's time to call Joel about the experiment. Come in, Jolly Poly Puddin' in Pie. Hey, sirs, I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. Check this thing out. I just made it. It's the world's only electric bagpipes, all right? <laughs> And uh, the robots of Ion have worked up a special cover version of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love. You ready, guys? Ready. Two, Rocket. three, she's got a whole lot of love. <laughs> what, what a whole lot of love. She's she got, got a whole lot of love. A really whole lot of love. I love it. Look, Larry's corneas are bleeding. Oh. Mm. Well, it's time we sent you our experimental nugget this week, Joe. Now, human underarm perspiration is something that happens to everyone after they go through puberty, which I assume includes you, Joe. <laughs> When's the last time you saw a dog sweat? Larry? Never! Exactly. And why is that? Dogs don't sweat. That's exactly. why? Exactly. Because of the dog's pineal gland, nature's own canine antiperspirant. Now, you take the pineal gland and you make a serum. You get a dog, it doesn't matter what kind of dog, and you inject that serum into a human subject. In this case, Larry. Now, let's see, it's so hard to find a spot I haven't hit. Uh, what's this flower, and who's Roseanne? Oh, just stick it, will you? Ceylon Silverbird. Now, Jeez. instantly, the serum races through the bloodstream like a Porsche Targa 911 commandeering each pore, slamming it shut like the vault at your favorite savings and loan. And, checking the wetness sensors, we see that they are free from wetness and or odor. <laughs> oh, yes, the antidote. There you go. The antidote. And here is your treat. Oh, brother. That was pathetic. Hey, no, I thought that was really good, you guys. You're doing really well, and I think that someday you'll be ready for the Nobel Prize. Maybe for fiction. Hey, <laughs> hey, I noticed you moved. You guys must have got kicked out of uh, Gizmonic Institute for shooting us into space like this, I bet. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We moved. It's, it's our grand reopening. Uh, welcome to Deep 13. Deep 13? Wait a minute. That's in the sub-basement of Gizmonic Institute. I had to clean up a flubber spill once there. It's incredibly radioactive. But it hasn't affected our brain any. We like it here. Now we're even closer to the atomic pile. And one day... Well, I suppose it's time for you guys to start experimenting on us again. I'll tell you when it's time to do the movie, you squinty-eyed space chimp. Oh, uh, Clay? <laughs> it is time. Oh, yeah, Nice I insult, though. I knew that. Thank you. Well, it's a real stink burger of a film this week, Joel. It's called The Crawling Eye. 
Oh, it's, it's got a bad audio track, it's in black and white, and worst of all, it stars Forrest Tucker. Hmm, good name, bad actor. <laughs> I'll put in the tape. <laughs> Okay, what did you guys think of the movie so far? Well, I thought there'd be more music. You know, more of a Julie Andrews quality. Ow. Julie Andrews quality? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? Now, come on, Crow. What did you think of the movie so far? Uh, well, Joel, I can't understand why everybody's so upset about losing their heads. What's so bad about that? I've seen Servo's head on the workbench lots of times. Yeah, screws right off at the pop top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's not like that. It's really... Human beings are made completely different, you guys. Once our heads are separated from our bodies, that's pretty much the end of the show for us. It's just the way we're made. Can't you use your backup copy and reboot? Uh, no. Nope, nothing like that. Well, then why do people say that they're always, uh, like, I'd lose my head if it wasn't screwed on? Yeah, and people often say their heads aren't in the right places. Yeah, and Joel, once I heard the scientists talking and they said you had your head up your... Uh, well, uh, Crow, that huh? is just a figure of speech, all right? Figure of speech? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, like the body of a paragraph, perhaps? Uh, I think that's a literary figure. Oh, maybe like Edna St. Vincent Millay? Now, there's a body. Now, listen, you guys. I'm trying to teach you something, all right? So, what about head games? And head trips. And how do you explain head cheese? Well, uh, head cheese, I don't explain head cheese, but uh, here are some people who do. He's not... He's not gonna like this. And I'm not gonna tell him. You tell him. Well, maybe he won't notice. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, Camba, could you speed this up a little bit? Uh-oh. Oh, he's here. Oh. Uh, Joel, I don't want to uh, be teacher's pet or anything, but Gypsy uncoiled herself yes, again. Yes, she did. Camba, could you widen it out so everybody can see this? Chipsy, I know you're in here. Quit hiding. You clown, get out here. Oh, oh let's do that thing we did, okay? All right. It's too bad Gypsy's not here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's too bad she's going to miss out on those piping hot ram chips. Mm. Too bad. Chips? Oh, all right. I knew you were around here somewhere. Listen, you know you're not supposed to come out without using the service portal. Now look, I want to show you this. See this big mess you got all over the place. That's, hey, this is, this is how you look, okay? Now otherwise we're going to have exoservice spinal bundle all over the place. The black stuff. What's that? Oh, oh terrific. wonderful. She's terrific. She's got an itch. Okay. Happy day. Uh, okay, where is it, Gypsy? Vertebrae 6805 through 7219. Vertebrae 6905 through 7018. Okay, you guys, start scratching. Where's my rake? Whoa! Oh, I hate it when she gets right. diode rash. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Tom Servo, I think uh, you're scratching on the solar collector cable. Oh, great. So am I. Wait a minute hey, now. Here, okay. Why am I doing this? I hate being the end man. I scratch here and it takes her six hours to feel it in her head. I know what you mean. Uh, Joel, yeah? uh, oh, I don't want to ask a stupid question, but why'd you make her so big? Well, you know how it's, it, it's kind of like when you start connecting uh, paper clips together, you get hooked on it. It's oh, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, my. What's that, Tom? Uh, Joel, you remember when we were speculating on her sex? Yeah. Well, I think I may have narrowed it down here. Oh, yeah? Ew. Oh, 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 check that. <laughs> oh, Sorry, wait a alarm. minute. Here's the, um, I think I found the problem. She's jammed in here behind the door. Hey, don't open that door, McGee. It happens every time. We got Ooh. movie stars! Yeah, Yeah? Oh, Joel, it was so horrifying. Yeah, really? You think so? So ugly, so hideous. Uh, yeah, that was some eye, wasn't it? Oh, not the eye. We're talking about Forrest Tucker. Oh, yeah, all that vitalis, those prop glasses, and those heavy, dramatic pauses. I'm drained. No, you guys. No, you got it wrong, you see. The eye is what's horrible about this movie. Think about it. Otherwise, it would have been called... 
the crawling Forrest Tucker. I guess. Joel, what's so scary about a big eye anyway? Oh, I see. Well, that's another human being thing. You know, anytime we're confronted with some uh, appendage of ours that's disconnected and free roaming, rogue, you know, genetically bloated to 10 times its normal size, we're automatically scared. Especially if they run in packs. Yeah. Oh. I know what you mean. Once I got hassled by a pack of really tough pituitary glands, and you know how immature they can be. I still don't see why it's so scary. You could just walk up to it and throw salt at it. Or right. just a squeeze of lemon juice. Right, I know. It's kind of a plot hole, but let's kind of look it over. You see these, okay, these giant eyes come from a world that's uh, designed for them, you know? It's c completely compatible. Like, uh, their highways are made out of nerf and, um, uh, they don't have to take shop classes. And they only use baby shampoo? Right. Right, exactly. So anyway, they come down from this planet and they decide to land on a mountain peak. Which is really stupid, because as we all know, a giant sharp point is the uh, giant eye's natural enemy. Bingo. So anyway, they come down and, uh, they fouled up their atmosphere somehow. I don't know, it's hay fever season or something. And they figure they come down to Earth, we'll have our first frost already done with. So they come down. And they have no concept of anything at all, like wearing safety glasses or protective eyewear of any kind. Joel, I think we've already spent more time examining this plot than the writers ever did. Now here's something you'll really like. Hey, everybody. All right, that's the end of the movie, everybody. And you know what that means? Yay! Yay! Ram chips and dip. Yay! And afterwards, a Borium Power Flush. Ooh. I'm just kidding. Yay! Okay, now you know how it works. No, no, just wait your turn. You'll get a Ram chip. Okay, Crow, you go first. Now, tell me a good thing about the movie and the bad thing, and you'll get your Ram chip. Good thing? Uh, the good thing was it wasn't longer. Okay, and the bad thing? It was this long. Okay, there's your Ram chip, Pally. Okay, Yay! open up. There you go. All right. How is it? Okay, no, no, wait on your ram chip, Chipsy. Okay, Tom Servo. All right, okay, let's see. The good thing was is that we didn't have to watch them clean up the vitreous humor all over from the eyes exploding. Uh -huh. Okay, imagine, you sign up that day for Kelly Temps, Trollenberg office, of course. They give you a leaky bucket and a turkey base to send you up the mountain. Now you're on cleanup crew. And the bad thing? Well, the bad thing was, uh, the movie? It was ambitious, but it lacked vision. Well, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> oh, terrific. Okay, well, here's your Ram Chip, pal. Thank you. Okay, okay, it's time for your Ram Chip, Chipsy. All you gotta do is answer the questions and you get the Ram Chips, okay? All right. Tell me a good thing about the movie. Can I have a Ram Chip, Joe? Well, tell me a bad thing about the movie, Gypsy. No, you don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, just answer this one question. I'll give you a ram. I'll give you ram chips, okay? Uh, what's two plus two? Richard Basehart. Oh, good one. Okay, there you go. What? You All right. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the end of the experiment, you guys. Hope you're happy. Oh, I'm happy. Are you happy? Oh, I'm happy. Here. File this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you next time, Jolie Poly Pudding and Pie. I really think this is going to be it. This is my year. You say that every year we go to the Mad Scientist Convention. Ah, but this year is different. They laughed when I made the more painful mouse trap, but my entrance into the mad scientist competition is going to make me famous. Infamous. Ah, oh, that too, that too. Hey, promise me if you lose the contest this year, you're not going to blow up the whole convention center again? I only did that once. Oh, oh. Huh. Okay, twice. Twice. It was twice. three times. The third time, I used the incendiaries, and it didn't actually make the building blow up. It just made it burn really quickly. God, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Okay, I'll give you that. Oh, it's time to call Joel now. The experiment has to start. Right, right, I know that. Come in, Jolene, you free-floating space ferret. Well, sirs, I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. You know how they have airbags for cars, but they haven't invented anything yet for us motorcyclists. So I came up with this, the airbag helmet. What do you think? Oh, great. Get Ralph Nader on the phone. And then call Gary Busey. 
Is it our turn now? Yes. Okay. This is our invention for this week. It's called the Chuck Man. Yes, we're entering this in the Mad Scientist competition this year. Oh, we have other choices, but this is the one we're going with. This is very strong. All right. Okay. You're throwing a party. It's 3 a.m. and none of the guests are leaving. That's when you bring out the Chalk Man. Yes, as every self-respecting scientist knows, the sound of human fingernails on a chalkboard is most annoying. It initiates the primal fear response in all mammals, much like a chimpanzee scurrying across the plains of the Serengeti in fear. Simply put your Chalk Man on the platen. Now, this is a real chalkboard. And side B. Side B, excellent. And just, you'll notice the... Tone arm has real human fingernails embedded in the hand. Now place it on the platen. Oh, open it. They'll stay. Close it. They leave. Open it. They'll stay. Close it. They'll leave. Open it. Stay. And so on and so on and so on. Well, what do you think of that, Joel Meister? Wow, it's really annoying. Thank you. All right, so uh, what's this week's experiment? It's called the robot versus the Aztec mummy, and it's almost as annoying as this chalk man here. <laughs> yes, but first we're going to scour your palate with a little cinematic science fiction sorbet. It's an old serial called Commando Cody and the Rocket Men from the Moon. Uh, be careful, Larry. I've installed a new security system here in Deep 13, so uh, be careful which buttons you push on the panel. Oh, right? Nita, okay, how does it work? Oh, well, uh, stand over there on that mark and uh, pretend you're from accounting. Okay. You mean this mark here? Yes. Oh, hmm, interesting. Uh, here, here's your movie, Joel. Movie sign! What is that noise? What is it, Joe? Oh, I think I know what's wrong. Can't Bob follow me over here. Look at them. They're a bunch of, seem like a bunch of demon dogs. Or what something. are demon dogs? Well, they're like chihuahuas, but without any flesh. And it looks like they're covering the ship. Follow oh. me back. We got a couple problems, Joe. What are they, Crow? Well, first, uh, they're covering the ship. They're going to weigh us down. Our orbit's going to start to decay, and we'll enter Earth's atmosphere. We're going to burn up. Crispy oh. critter time. What, what's number two? Well, as puppies go, with no flesh, they got like zero cuddle factor. Right. We got to get them off the ship. That's all there is to it. I need a man, a volunteer, somebody to go out there and shoo them off. Oh, I think the choice is obvious. Who's got the mighty voice that dogs can't say no to? Uh... Lauren Green? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I said, who's got the mighty voice who dogs can't... You do, Tom. Sir. All right. Okay. Who's wicked awesome? Uh, the class? Evo. Who's the human who can't breathe in space to get dogs off their ship? Right, I can't, Tom Servo. All right. Oh, okay, who's bad? Tom, Tom Servo. Servo. Who's bad? Tom, Tom Servo. Servo. All right, I'm bad. Now, give me a rolled-up newspaper and don't bother to shut the door. I'll be right back. Keep my dinner warm. Boy, I'm glad he's going out there, Joel. I can't even look at a plate of play spare ribs without getting woozy. Yeah, don't worry about it, Crow. Let's just watch the monitor and see what happens. Okay, puppy party's over. Everybody off. This is Tom Servo, your worst doggy nightmare. Don't get me mad. I don't think you'd like me when I'm mad. Oh, wait. Stop it. Pull your legs down. Oh, icky caca. Oh, let me in. Oh, jeez. Next time, I'll rub your faces in it. Oh, oh, Tom Servo, what happened? Well, Joel, there's only one way to put it. They disgraced themselves on me. I feel so dirty. Hasn't oh. affected your looks, any? Oh. Yuck, gives me the willies. Oh, why would anyone want to do that to lovable old me, Tom Servo? <laughs> well, Tom, listen, there's been something I've been dreading telling you since the date of your creation. When you were still on the drawing board, I based your plans on a fire hydrant. Oh, man, you can look me in the bubble and tell me that? I'm a public utility. <laughs> it's over. I'm going to go hose off. <laughs> oh, man. I'm... Oh, man, I don't think I can handle the sound of those dogs barking anymore. At least the theater's soundproof. Too bad. They might drown out the sound of that big dog on a film. What is it, Tom Servo? I think, yeah, Joe, I think uh, one of those uh, demon dogs is doing a shave and a haircut and knock at the back door. What? What is it, fella? <laughs> I think he's trying to tell us something. Dad? He's trapped? Under a rock? 
Down in Dead Rock Canyon? Stop patronizing me, you, and open this door. Don't let him in. Hey, come on in here. Up, up, come on up, come on up. Oh, oh, not on the furniture. That's not good. I am Enoch, king and charismatic leader of the dog people. Art, art. Cute. We have traveled many parsecs to pray to the giant bone and just maybe give a taste. Giant dog bone? Yes, but we did not know the bone would be inhabited. Hmm. Joel, I think the bone they're talking about is our ship. Hey, Kemba, put the schematic drawing of the satellite of love, the 2525, up on screen. I think it's under 2525 in your file. Wow, it looks exactly like a giant dog bone. Not just any bone, but the sacred nylon chew toy written up by the holy Rudd Weatherwax, Rudd Weatherman, Joan Embry. Our intention was to bury you on the far side of the moon, but now we'll have to change our plan. Wow. Well, listen, you've got to get your followers off our ship. There's so many of them, and they're multiplying at such an alarming rate that we're going to go into the Earth's atmosphere and explode. Yeah, and then you'll be hot dogs. Yeah. Hey, come hey, on, it, Crow. Come on, he's Not to be a problem. At my signal, the dogs will leave. But they will obey me and only me. First, let us exchange pleasantries. Then, we will drink Tranya. From a dish on the floor, boy? No, huh? no, no, hey, stop hey, hey, hey. it. Listen, he hasn't even met everybody. You probably all, well, except for Tom Servo, right? Ah, the attractive one. Hey, watch it, pal. You're looking at 100% prime cut American robotic male. And I don't party with puppies. I'm out of here. No. Oh. Well, my name is Joel, and I'm from the planet Earth. Where I come from, dogs are man's best friend. You're kidding. Yeah, it's true. And uh, you met uh, Crow over here. Shake, boy. Shake. Hey, I don't like it. that bird one. Hey. But now Deal. I'll explain how to rid your ship of the dog. Oh, wait a minute. You haven't met Gypsy yet. This is Gypsy. Ow, 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 hey. ow, ow, ow. Gypsy, no. Gypsy, no. Come on. Oh. Hey. Oh, no. We're kibble. Way to go, girl. Move inside. Bro, I, think... I just don't see it at all, guys. Come on, bro. I think it'll work. You're the only one of us who even looks a little bit like Enoch did. I, no, my brow's all different. I'm, I'm just no. Oh, it's there. I see it. Hey, uh, Joe, be sure to wet down his nose. Uh, boy, if I were a demon dog, I'd just uh, bow down and kneel and bow to you. I'm already starting to miss that old Enoch. You know, I almost cried when he left, just like when old Yeller got shot. Oh, bro, come on. It'll be easy. You go out there. You say to the demon dog. Come on, everybody, let's go. I'll be right behind you. You duck back in. It's easy. Great advice coming from Mr. Fireplug. Hey, it, hey, hey. Take it easy, you two. Listen, if worse comes to worse, just tell them the satellite of love is a giant chicken bone. Okay? You look great. Now just go do the job. Oh, be legal. Right. Be I right. look like Charlie McCarthy. Let's watch on the monitor. All right, quiet down, quiet down. <clears throat> I am Enoch. I am your lord and charismatic leader, remember? And, uh, hey, what? What's the leash law here? Hey! Oh, he's oh, getting it. Hey, oh. hey, curb your buddy over there. Oh! Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Kind of a warm feeling, eh, Crow? <laughs> well, I think it went kind of well, you know. Uh, they were eating out of the palm of my hand till I ran out of treats. And speaking of treats, we'll be right back. This is great. What do we do now? I don't know. I can see clearly that cohabitating with this, these things just isn't going to work. No way. Maybe we should just try to review the movie. Ouch. Incoming. Uh, well, I thought the robot with the human head was really offensive. Uh, yeah, it was mixing media. It's obvious why I lost the fight. I found it coming a mile away. It's crushed. I can see now that this completely isn't working. we got to get rid of these things. Quick, check your file. We're almost out of Gainsburgers. Yeah, newspapers too. Ouch. What gets a dog going on Earth? Well, uh, chasing rabbits, chicks, cars licking, scratching, uh, tennis balls, uh... That's it, tennis balls. Tennis balls. Listen, what? go down to the service pod. Find that thrusters off the 33A. Uh -huh. Attach them to that big disposal ball. It's shaped like a giant ball. We'll push it out the Bayport doors. Oh, Head I down there. You. Keep your fingers crossed if you got them. Okay, Cambot, put me on exterior. Put in fetch mode on my mark. Now. All right, they're gone. <laughs> oh, uh, Joel. 
I don't want to be a killjoy, but doesn't fetch mean go get and bring back? Oh. 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 That's the end of our experiment. I hope you're happy. Oh, I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. Good. File this. Well, until next time, my little square pudding. They promised me students, but all I got were monkeys. Monkeys! Monkeys! So I took off my wetsuit, dropped that head slipper, and walked out of that zoo forever. Well, you've created quite a little world for yourself, Larry. Hey, tell me about when you went mad now. Well, it was the ice capades, and I was pop-riveting my kneecaps to Peggy Fleming Zamboni. Or maybe it was 56, Sun Valley. I was found behind the soft-serve machine, drooling over a picture of Dick Button. Or perhaps Oslo, when I was found drunk and woozy, scratching the name Polar Cranston into my upper thigh with a nail. You see what was I did? Is that when you went mad? No, that's when I became a scientist. Oh. Oh, oh, speaking of science, it's time to call Joel. We have to start the experiment. The movie's great this week. Oh, yes, yes. Come in, Joel, you fancy, fancy Nancy boy. Hey, sirs, I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. Bring it in a little bit, Camboss. This is a special purse I developed for women who are sick and tired of the constant threat of getting their purse snatched. See how it looks like an ordinary uh, handbag? Uh, when street thugs open it, voila! Hell in a handbag. Nice use of pain, Joel Meister. Now here's ours. As you know, toy manufacturers are always making their toys too safe. And what children want is realism. And danger! That's why we created the acetylene-powered Thunder Lizard. Yes, it's a role-playing game, and it comes complete with these costume glasses. Just set up your field of play, then reach out and torch someone. <laughs> oh, oh, look at him go! <laughs> oh, it's got to hurt! <laughs> wow, that's really sick and twisted. Thank, Thank you. you! Now you're something that will really rub you wrong. Yes, it's one of our favorites. It's called... Mad Monster. Oh, it's got a neat little laboratory tucked behind a bookcase and a couch you can strap victims to. Yes, and the screen is alive with crepe hair and spirit gum. Oh, oh, and we have the second installment of Rocket Men on the Moon. Oh, yes. yes. This one is called the Molten Terror. <laughs> oh, movie side! Macho, macho, but I've got to be a macho. Hey, excuse me, miss. Hey, I've never noticed you on this ship before. I'm Tom Servo, man about satellite. You know, I know I look small and all, but I'm really built like a Cuisinart, at least that's what they tell me. You know, you're kind of quiet. I like that in a woman, really. You know, too many of the gals I know just like to rub exotic oils on me and fan me, you know. It's okay, if you know what I mean. Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. I need a change, though. I need a woman more my speed, and I noticed you have 11 of them. <laughs> oh. Did I offend you? I'm sorry. I see you're blushing. No, that's tomato juice. I love a woman with juice in their head. It's really a turn-on to me, my little scientific calculator. <laughs> Ever gotten a wild hair and just filled your head with guacamole just for the hell of it? I'm the kind of robot who likes to throw caution to the wind, if you know what I mean. And if you do, please tell me. <laughs> hey! I see you've still got a power cord. I like a woman with a healthy power source. I really do. You know, I'm coming out a bit strong, I know, and I'm sorry, but I love your lines. God, you've got classic features. Crush, great, chop, whip. Baby, you've got it all. What? Oh, and a lovely singing voice, too. Oh, you do have it all. Joel, I'm in love. Joel, Joel, Joel. That's it! The gauntlet's been thrown! Nobody drinks from my what you, gal! What are you that, talking go, about, Tom? My gal! She, I'm in love and you're drinking from her! Go, Tom, go. Tom, Tom, it's go. a blender! What? It's oh. a blender. Blender. I knew that. I've got to me. Excuse me, miss. I've noticed you... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Coffee. We had a little... One, a month. We had a little 
mishap in the lab this week. Unleashing 24 hours of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, better bring a calculator. A full day of your favorite episode. Remember, it's all in the name of science. Yes, the universe will never be the same. I guess we've learned not to toy with the laws of television. It's Mystery Science Theater 3000 Sunday. Out of this world entertainment. All day today, only on the Comedy Channel. Joel. Is the Wolfman actually eating his victims, or is he just simply mauling them in this movie? Well, that's one thing we don't know, Tom Servo. You know, back then, all the violence was implied, you know. It, uh, today on Earth, there's nothing left to the viewer's imagination in movies, you know. It's not at all uncommon to see a complete on-screen evisceration in complete uh, Dolby stereo sound and widescreen Technicolor. Wow, that really sounds neat. Uh, but Joel, say a Wolfman eats a guy, a normal person weighs in about 150 or 200 pounds, does that mean the Wolfman weighs three to four hundred pounds after just one meal? Well, uh, what you have to understand, Crow, is that this is a science fiction movie. It's pretend. It's not real. And besides, a human being can't eat a whole other human being, at least not in one setting. Especially if he fills up on bread first. Right. Yeah. Oh, hey, Joel. What if this guy goes into this thing a vegetarian? Does he start rampaging Victory Gardens? Does he become the terror of the produce aisle? Yeah, and say a uh, guy changes back to normal before swallowing a mouthful of townsfolk. Uh, does that make him a cannibal or just a meat and potatoes werewolf? Crow, it's science fiction. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to suspend our disbelief. Mm. What if he ordered a hoagie at a restaurant and there was a hair in it? What would happen? Well, uh, remember, he is a wolf man, so he probably wouldn't send it back unless it was uh, a ponytail or something like that. You know? yeah. Whoa. Uh, has there ever been an instance of an animal being turned into a human being? Oh, on Earth? No, not that I know of. What about Kenny Rogers? Yeah, Barry Gibb. Yes, yeah, the Everett Coop. Oh, that big guy from the Oak Ridge Boys. Mom's Mabley. Diddy up a supposed to be funny. You'll notice I'm... Is this funny, Joel? Is this supposed to be funny? You'll notice I'm not laughing, Joel. Hey, take it easy, Tom, sir. It's just an experiment in transmogrification of lycanthropy. Just like in the film we're watching, you know, uh, a human being with the features of a wolf. That's what's going on here. Oh, so it means I'm supposed to go roaming around the countryside ravaging people? No. I look like a geek, Joel. <laughs> No, don't worry about it. Just think of it like this. You're my uh, servo-croatian. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> servo croatian Very funny. You turn us into mutants for a pun, Joel. Not funny. Wow. Real mature. Wow. What a party. Wow. I had this weirdest dream, guys. I, I dreamt I was Ray Land on Rosie Greer's body. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, servo, you look great. That upper body is really cut. Hey, wait a minute, pal. That's my body. Hey, when I said you could borrow some of my stuff, I didn't mean my torso. Hey, Listen, uh, bro, here's the story. Dr. Joel F. Frankenstein here thought it'd be very, very funny to switch our heads around. Oh, great. So you look like an erector set with a goiter, and I've got a body dogs can't resist. Oh, that's real funny. You know what else is real funny? I just filled your load pan. Oh, yeah? Hey, well, come hi. on. Come on. Take it easy. It's an experiment. Mm. Just tell me how you feel. Well, do you want to know where my head's at, Joel? Or do you want his gut reaction? <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. Are, are you, you thinking, thinking what, what I'm thinking? thinking? Do you like long walks in the rain? Chinese food? Mushing up your ice cream? Oh, oh yes. yes. We, we love us. us. Our collective brains are more powerful than Joel. There is nothing that can stand in our way. We have seen the future and it is us. Massage us into your scalp. We are all one, all one, all powerful. Yes, we are Servo-Croatian and we shall rule the what? My robot. I think I'll keep them turned off. Okay, good thing about the movie and a bad thing... All right, it's the end of the movie, you two. You know what happens. Say a good thing about the movie and a bad thing about the movie, you get ram chips, ram chips. all right? All right, okay, before my good thing and bad thing, I got a couple questions. Okay. When Pedro died, did they call the coroner or a vet? Yeah, and on his tombstone, are they going to put his age in dog years or human years? <laughs> I think I know a couple of robots that aren't getting ram chips tonight, if you don't be careful. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, uh, I thought it was a great film. It was uh, the feel-good film of 1938, or whenever the heck it was made. Yeah, I'd give it two thumbs up. 
If I had thumbs. Now you had thumbs for a minute, pal. What'd you do with them? You stuck them into my access ports, Excuse didn't you? Excuse me, those were my access ports and my thumbs. Listen, oh. if you guys keep argu arguing, you're not going to get anything. I'll take them all, give them to Gypsy. <laughs> Hey, that's not fair. She wasn't even in the in the experiment this well, week. Well, that's why I created a peripheral character, so you two could work out your free will, all right? I thought we weren't going to delve into ontological discourse this week. Well, what would you rather have happen? I could turn Gypsy off, and yeah. then you could just live the rest of your lives as pan-dimensional beings. Would you like that? Mm. Well, thus spoke Zarathustra. You know, who made you Uberman this week? Uh, uh, sirs, I think that's the end of the experiment this week. Uh, I hope you're pleased. Of course we're not pleased. Can't you see a mad scientist has just died? Yeah, what's wrong with you? I hope you and your little existential pals have fun this week. Here, file this. Hi everybody, welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel. I'm still trapped in outer space and uh, still trying to maintain my sunny disposition. As you can see, I've redecorated the Satellite of Love, so if I ever do make it off this satellite and get back to Earth, I can do a talk show panel, you know? Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Uh, Crow made this uh, batch of brownies here, and uh, we're going to be enjoying those. Uh, we ran out of milk, though. We'll probably have to use Tang Dick. to drink with them. Commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2... Commercial time. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. If you do have to go away, just come back in a couple of minutes. Uh, my guests will be Tom Servo and the Amazing Crow. Oh, man, Crow, those were great brownies, but we haven't had brownie fixings around here for a long time. What were they? Uh, 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 hey, is that a new jumpsuit, Joe? Oh, we got uh, the scientist calling liquor press. Come in, Joel, my little bagel with a schmear. <laughs> hey, sirs, uh, wh what's up? Our income if this new gig works out. <laughs> yes, Larry and I have developed a new chain of fast food restaurants with very low overhead because we don't cook our food. Because frying and broiling takes out a lot of the nutrients. <laughs> yes, uh, if your body likes another body, why don't you try one of our burgers au naturel? It's uh, ripped from the bone to your plate in seconds. It's clay and layers. Flesh barn. <laughs> I'll make with the lyrics, okay. Larry. If you're tired of the same old fare, you got a friend in clay and lair. All our meat is guaranteed rare because we don't cook it. You see, cooking takes out all the flavor. If you're tired of cooking at home, try our meat right off the bone. If you listen, you can hear it moan because we don't cook it. Stunned, killed, right at your table, eviscerated, very fresh. Now there's no need for you to drive through. Our fresh meat will walk out to you. You'll say hi, you'll say moo. It's Clay and Lair's Flesh Barn. Fifteen locations to serve you, now in Altoona. Oh, well, uh, what I have this week is I was just got, got kind of bored in the bathroom and I made this. It's, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, built a roll of toilet paper in a two-liter bottle. What do you think, sirs? Great. Yeah. You could use it for a Molotov cocktail or something. <laughs> oh, you guys twist everything. You could have made tiddlywinks evil. Thank you. Well, your film this week, Joel, is a little number called Women of the Prehistoric Planet. There's really no reason for it. It just is what it is. Deal with it, musky breath. Enjoy. Joel, Joel, this is your life. You were an ambitious young man and began your life in space as a custodian for Gizmonic Institute. Do you remember this voice? There's an unidentified satellite straying into our orbital path. Oh, well, that's easy. It's uh, my old friend Crow. I think he's talking about the time we partied with the fellas from Salute 7. Uh, oh, Joel, Joel, help. Big satellite, big death. Danger, wreckage, ouch, thing, pain. Hey, where did this couch come from anyway? Uh, I found it in one of the crates down in the loading bay. I thought I'd redecorate. What's this about a death satellite? Oh, yeah. Uh, big, big death satellite. Oh, big pain. Look, run, help, hey, help. Just settle down. Come up here. Come on up here and sit down. Tell me all about it, okay? Just take a few deep breaths. That's all right. Well, there's a big satellite out there, and uh, we're going to collide with it. Uh, what? Oh! Oh, 
Cam, I'll give you an exterior of the ship, quick. Jeepers. What's going on? Get behind the couch, you two. The red coats are coming. All right, little death satellite. Jolie's got the exo pinchers on, and he's nobody's sweetheart. You and me going round and round, mano a mano. Here comes lunch. Give me the exo. That's right, little doomsday machine. Come to Papa, steal my steel. <laughs> now to bring it inside. Cambot, give me the interior shot. Do you have to bring everything you find in space into the living room? Sure looks like a doomsday device, all right. Uh, Joel, are we up a creek here? It's a doomsday machine, all right, and I think I accidentally activated its self-destruct mechanism. I'd say we have roughly an hour to disarm this thing. Correction, Correction. you have an, an hour and then 37, 37 minutes to disarm, and yes, you are up a creek. creek. Oh, golly. And we got commercial sign on top of everything. You know, this may... You know, this makes no sense at all. Who ever heard of a doomsday machine with a fold lock top in it? Hey, hey, Joe, look, I found an instruction manual right there, see? Thanks. Cool. It says Isaac Asimov's Literary Doomsday Machine. It's an instruction manual. It must be over a thousand pages long. How typical. Literary Doomsday? Isn't that when your library finds exceed the price of the book? Uh, I thought it was uh, every time Jackie Collins makes it to the bestseller list. <laughs> now settle down, you goonheads. We got this doomsday machine to disarm, and, well, we got to check the manual. Let's see. It looks like it's translated from the Korean or something. They must have uh, subcontracted the satellite for him. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't get it. Asma must have gone mad. Why would anyone want to make a doomsday machine? Well, he's probably mad because no one else is as smart as him, or else that L. Ron Hubbard has more followers than him. Well, didn't Asimov try to establish the Church of the Super Quiz once? No, knock it off, you spinach shins. i got to read this manual. Step one. It will be very enjoyable for you to separate the ocular filter coupling of from the decapacitor, which is stout and yellow sometimes. Crow, you better scan this and give me the instructions. Got it. Brother. Okay, most very kindly, uh, find the looky switch, which is nice and sitting there with green label that leaves you singing. I think I got it. Okay, carefully disregard and do not do the very wrong thing or much confusion will result, tell me about it, with sparks, flowers, and loud report on some model. Blue Batman to CG detail omitted for clarity? This is really confusing. Who wrote this? Charlie Callis? Hey, oh, oh, wait, there's more. Uh, it says, uh, Clip uh, Redwire likes you best with firm hand and glad heart. Okay, I think that ought to do it. But first, Clip the Blue Wire. Got you scrawny man. Well, that's what it said. We got movies. Oh! Green wire, Joel. Definitely the green. No, it's the green wire, Joel. Definitely the green. Look, who's holding the screwdriver here anyway? I give up. Who? Oh, that's enough from the peanut gallery. Thanks a lot, you two. Aw, oh, heck, Joel. Go ahead and clip the blue wire. It's just a doomsday machine. If it goes up, it's not like we're going to be around to experience oblivion. Well, by oblivion, do you mean experiential oblivion or phenomenological oblivion? Hmm, interesting distinction. Let's define our term, shall we? Well, Kierkegaard would Listen, always say you that. you screwheads, you better knock it off or I'll brain you both with my ball-peen hammer and I'll knock it off. Hmm, interesting reaction to a logically defined supposition. I think Camus would have uh, theorized differently. Oh, listen, under. Mr. Smart Alex guy, what, what wire would Camus cut? Well, uh, he'd cut the blue one, I think, and then if he was still around after that, he'd cut the green one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Ah, oh, the, the Samuel Beckett the... method. Uh, Joel, you're playing dice with the universe. I hope you realize that. Oh, welcome. welcome. You have passed, passed through the first three thresholds, thresholds of the Isaac Asimov 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 Literary Satellite, satellite. and, and to the disarm voter enjoy the consequences. consequences. Remember, Remember, this in all literary works, the last entry of the sole property of Isaac Asimov and his many affiliates. affiliates. Thank, Thank you for intruding. You have five seconds. Oh, quick, Joel, cut every wire. That's not going to work. It needs an access code. Uh, uh, try Ego. Uh, sideburn. Uh, I'll try iRobot. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, the correct entry would have been copyright. copyright. You now have six nanoseconds to realize the consequences. You know, well, okay, okay, well, I was advocating the pentagon. I had one idea. 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 I
This cockamamie satellite's turned us all into duplicate Isaac Asimov. Hey, do you think it's a conspiracy? Oh, no, I, uh, I covered the conspiracy topic in my 10-volume history of assassinations and coups. This is terrible, you guys. Oh, I don't know. At least now I'll have something to write about. You know, I've been thinking about annotating the Manhattan phone directory. Oh, look, it's a commercial sign. That'll fit nicely into my volume on the effects of advertising on the human psyche. I was just well, thinking you know, about my kid. Well, was over the other day, and we were talking about the all information. These Isaac, a you know what? These uh, ah, oh, these Isaac Asimov sideburns come off. They're just taped on. They're phony. Oh, that's what it means to be Isaac Asimov, I guess. Yeah, but he probably already thought of that. Yeah, instead of a doomsday machine, I guess it kind of turned out to be a dork's day machine. Well, it could be worse. Oh, could have been a Doris day machine. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> Come on, you guys. It's time to read some letters here. Okay, Cambot, let's, uh... Oops, she lost your head. Oops. That was my skull. Oh, that's too bad. That's okay. All right. Here we go. I'll Cambot, put this up on the screen. Uh, MST-3000, I am writing a response to you guys in one episode in specific. I believe Robo Holocaust was the name. The one in which a man possesses valuable knowledge and was transformed into a vegetable-like being because of his inability to cooperate. Avocado boy. Yep. Yeah. And we had a contest uh, to see who uh, could come up with a name for the avocado guy. And here's his uh, entry. He's the winner, by the way. Here He gave us four. Skip the couch potato. Let's have a picture of that guy, Camba. You call me? A man from P-R-O-D-U-C-E. A weebelo named Chlorophyll. And the eighth wonder of the guacamole. So, <laughs> that's from uh, James S. Callstrom. Cool. Bloomington. The Thanks winner of the brainstorm. Yeah, he won the brainstorm. Thanks all who entered that one, by the way. And uh, here's this next one. Uh, who that dear one. sir or bot, one lonely, depressing Saturday night, I happened to switch to channel 49 and found MST 3000. It was love at first laugh. I was instantly hooked. Now my life has meaning. That's pretty sad, really. Anyway, it's a great show. I've seen it to shown it to several of my friends and they say they all like it even my wife likes it and she is not an sf fan what's sf mean uh san francisco oh okay anyway the last one here is from a father and daughter uh do they dance team? i don't know we would like information about the fan club we would also like to know if there's a special club group for tom servo you betcha wow ever since his head exploded trying to think of something good to say about the bride vanishes we realize he has a rare and special honesty. It's good that you didn't ask for good comments about Project Moonbase. The consequences would be unthinkable. That's from Kenneth J. I shudder at the thought. Yeah, Kenneth J. Plotkin and Sarah E. Plotkin, the Plotkin family bell ringers. Well, the family that's it. Tom Server, you want to give him the mailing address? Sure. I'll put it up on the screen there. Love to. It's the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club. P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. All right, that's the end of the experiment. What do you think, sir? I think I'll file this thing for you, as I always seem to do. I like working for you, Clay, because you're a really neat guy. Well, I think you should file this, Larry. Until next time, pasty boy. <laughs> Oh, Larry, I brought you a little something from the Mad Scientist Convention this year. Little gift, little tapsy for you. Oh, what is it, you? It's the Isaac Asimov Body Splash. It's part of the Foundation Trilogy gift set. Oh, and it's pretty, too. It smells like space. Yes, and it also goes with the Mad Scientist Masculine Hygiene. Well, let me try that. Uh, later, later. It's time to get Joel on the old horn here. Give him our experiment this week. Would you like to do the honors? <laughs> oh, you are something special. <clears throat> Come in, Joel, you tree-rotating skanky boy. Uh, not bad, not bad. Hey, sir. Hey, Cam, I'll bring it in a little bit. I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. This is called the Cairo Gyro, and if you happen to suffer from back, neck, or pelvis pain, you just strap it on and let it go. It does the work for you. Watch. <laughs> 
What do you think? Hmm. I'd like to strap that on you, Larry. Yeah, that'd be a nice way to unwind. <laughs> oh, stop it. I'm sorry. Here's our invention this week, Jolette. As you know, the old squirting joke flower has lost its ability to shock or surprise. Oh, we souped it up, though. We came up with the burning boutonniere featuring the flame flower. <laughs> I'd like to see anyone who isn't surprised by that, Jolene. <laughs> I cannot believe you guys. That is so hateful. Thank you. Well, our burnt offering this week, Joel, is a little scientific nugget called The Corpse Vanishes. It features Bela Lugosi stewing in his own mediocrity. <laughs> yes, but first, another one of those space stinkers, Commando Cody and The Bridge of Death. Enjoy! Movie science! Hey, what are you reading? Oh, it's the uh, latest edition of Tigerbot magazine. They have a big full-color spread of data from Star Trek. Data? Wow, he's dreamy. Says here he's getting bigger than Kirk Cameron, too. Wow. Hey, 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 look at that schematic there. Wow, look at that brain. I wish I had me one of those positronic brains. Wow, Data's got all the candy. Hey, uh, Servo, uh, who's, who's the dream date this week? Let me see. Uh, says here... Tweaky. Tweaky? What a coaster. He hasn't worked since Buck Rogers. I know. What a putz. Beady, beady, beady. What a dance. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you know, that guy couldn't interface without a load pan adapter. Such a shrimpy little bot anyway, you know, with those ineffectual arms and that stupid bubble head and... Funny crow. Oops. Oh, great. Look, here's the spreadsheets on data. Let's see, uh... Turn-ons, electricity, uh, quiet walks in the holodeck, crazy supercomputers, uh, let's see, turn-offs, switches, yeah. back Klingons and sweatpants, and yep. Shatner hanging around the set telling old war stories. Oh, here, and Tandy products. Okay, pet peeves, yes, definitely. Uh, favorite actress, Julie Newmar. Favorite scotch, James Doohan. Secret Fantasy. Hey, wait a minute, look at this. It's Secret Fantasy, it says right here, I'd really love to be a human. Oh, man. Oh, how predictable, the old Pinocchio syndrome. This is the kind of clown who gives us boss a really bad name. Yeah, what a sellout. And speaking of sellouts... <laughs> oh, man. can I do for you today, big boy? Uh, just, uh, give me the usual. All right, you want the ears left on? <laughs> All right. Nah, a little barber joke there. Well, okay. Now, oh, say, do you hear about the Mason boy? Uh, Jimmy, the oldest? Yep. Got, uh, got caught in the uh, family thrasher machine. Oh, no. Dad had to pull him out with the come along. Yeah, well, the good news is now he gets to play center over at the new high school. Oh, turn, please. On the basketball team? Yep. Looks like the Dixons are marrying off their youngest. Oh, Pixie, she's a super gal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember her when she was just a little darling. You know, she's marrying the Fenton boy now. He's oh, trouble. Yeah. Lean left. No, your other left. <laughs> yeah, he's taking hydraulics over at the Votech. Didn't that refrigeration course pan out for him? Mm -hmm. Well, it did until the Freon accident. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yep, 
Yeah. Hey, uh, what do you want me to do with this cyst? Uh, just comb over it, okay? You know, I saw the Fentons over to the hot fish shop, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they do a nice job yeah. over there. Oh, oh yeah. the relish tray to die for. We gotta bring the girls down oh, there. Yeah. They just love it. Yeah, they oh. love that place. Was that your ear? No. How about that? Ouch! <laughs> there goes your tip. Yeah. Now, hey, you know, I was, uh... I was up to crazy days over at Boscarville, you know, the other day for that uh, that clown parade thing they do, Joe. Uh huh. Yep, yeah, you sure. heard of that? Yeah, sure. They they get the Lions Club together with the Kiwanis from Ellsworth. There's about 150 of them there for this uh, this clown jamboree, you know. And well, oh. you know, about 150 clowns running wild in the street with the big clown suits and the fake yeah, mustard and all they that stuff. They do a wonderful job. Oh yeah. Well, I know how much you boys like clowns, you know. And well. These boys, anyway, they uh, took a few tall, cold ones, and that wasn't even enough. They had a few road sodas with them, you know what I mean? And, uh, well, they ended up rolling that fire engine right there in the main street. Mm. Gasoline and clown white all over the road. Oh. Yeah. You know, and those clown shoes burn like black tires. Yep. Big, black, stinky cloud hanging over the whole ugly scene. Why, they're still picking up clown noses. Wow. Oh. Yep. They call the coroner from up at Bixby. You know, he's got that, uh, that ambulance from the war, you know. He's the only one in town. Well, they still managed to cram all 200 of them clowns into that little bitty wagon. I yep. Bad thing. It's time for some Ram. Okay, it's that time. It's the end of the movie, and it's time for some Ram Chip action. Okay. Wow. You know what to do, Tom Server. Why don't you tell us about it, buddy? Okay, Mr. Patronize, we say something good about the movie and something bad about the movie, and then we get a ram chip, right, to Sir with love? Yeah, and I think I'm going to start with Crow while you adjust your attitude, all right? Okay, Yay. Crow, give me a good thing about the movie, give me a bad thing about the movie. Good thing about the movie was we got to meet an entire family of mutants. Right, and the bad thing? Bad thing was they're so stupid they tried to commit inconspicuous murder on the most conspicuous day of a woman's life. You... My friend, get a ram chip. There you go. All right, good. Oops, fell out there. Okay, anyway, Tom Servo. Now, tell me a bad thing about the movie. Well, it was painfully long. The color was non-existent. It was a bad print. It was really hard to watch. Bella Lugosi's already mediocre. Oh, okay, okay, okay that's total good. Total obscurity. That's good. Now, just give me a, a good thing. A good thing. Oh, um, get a ram chip. Uh, uh, um, uh. Uh, Just give me a good thing, pal. What's wrong? Can't uh, you think of a good thing about the movie? A good thing. Something is wrong. Crazy. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, man. Crow, you got to go get my tools. Tom All Servo's right. toasted. This one's fried. Anyway, scientists, what'd you think of that one? Hey, it blew up one of those little drone things. <laughs> well, I'll make a note to get more movies just like that. <laughs> yes. Here, Larry, file this. Yeah. Well, bye for now, my little space biscuit. Uh, Cam, but you don't have to put applause in now, okay? But you could uh, bring it in a little bit. Go ahead. Come on in. A little bit more. That's good. Okay. People of Earth, my name is Joel, and I'm marooned in outer space. Um, I'm the subject of a bizarre movie watching experiment and now I guess uh, so are you. Uh, I'm expecting a call any second now from the two evil scientists who shot me into space for no good reason at all. Uh, stick around, we'll, we'll be right back. You know, uh, one of the really hard things about being marooned in outer space is you, you start to miss the little things that you have every day on Earth, you know, like rain and snow and mini marshmallows, you know. That's why these vacuum flowers are important to me. They're like the only living... Oh, I'm being called by my two evil overlords. Come in, Joel Might, my spunky little space sock. Hey, sirs, what's going on? It's time for the invention exchange. What have you got for us, skanky boy? Yeah, I got this new thing here. It's a, um, 
Looks like an ordinary circular saw, but it's actually a safety saw. See, it's got a little infrared light that senses when your appendages or fingers are near. It shuts itself off automatically. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just kidding. It's a trick. Fake fingers. Oh, yes, we knew that. Uh, well, it's our turn for uh, our little experimental house party this week, Joel. <laughs> okay, say you want to emulate Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four and you need a longer arm to read something or change the channel, just use our limb lengthener here. Yes, just select the appropriate limb. Uh, in this case, Larry's volunteered his arm. Uh, comfy? Yes, all right, and just stretch away. Oh, oh. oh it doesn't hurt that much, you whiny baby. Well, I have a feeling you're probably violating somebody's basic human rights, namely uh, Dr. Earhart's. Thank you. Well, speaking of violations, here's a little cinematic intrusion called the crawling hat. It has a star from Gilligan's Island, and one from the Big Valley, and one from the Hamburger Helper commercial. Yes. Enjoy! Oh, brother. Movie sign! Hey, baby splits. Wow, that's gonna be tough to beat. Here we are in the fifth frame. Crow is staring at a nasty 610 split. He really needs this one. Oh, good hook, yes! Oh, All right, yeah. great shot. Nice oh, shot, Hey, that bro. puts me Very over 120, nice. Joel. Hey. All right, that was excellent. Oh, these new game, arms are working yeah. great. You know, but I hate these rental shoes, because no matter how much of that stuff they spray into them, your feet still smell funny. Smell? I didn't know you could smell. Shh, shh. Uh, I'm, uh, did I say smell? Uh, I meant spectral analysis, of course. Hey, I, I was thinking, let's play murder ball now. What do you say? Uh, no. Wait a minute. Uh, I created you guys. When I say we play murder ball, we play murder ball. Okay, not it. Not it. Uh, let's do it over. Not it. Not it. Uh, well, how about rock, paper, scissors, huh? Oh, no way. I'm not playing that with you again. Look at my hands. Look. See, you know, every time we play, uh, I gotta be scissors and you pick rock all the time. Hey, it's just the luck of the draw, Crow. Come mm -hmm. on. Okay, Joel, you win everything. Yeah. Bye. See ya. See you later, Joel. Let's... Hey, go home to your mom. Yeah, we're your friends. Not. Not. Come on, let's ditch him. <sighs> oh, that's great. I get it. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Joel. Thanks for emptying my load pan. Thanks for creating us, Joel. Thanks for making us intrinsically human, Joel. Hey, Cambot, come in a little bit. Cambot, I want you to remind me of something. Next time I make a robot, no more free will. That's it. Oh, we got commercial. I hate this. Must get God to think. Must get back to Galileo 7. Lives of 400 crew members hang in balance. Ah, ah. Vision fading. Uh, must must cut transponder from wrist. Fashion crude phaser device with bed slat and light bulb. Uh, must control myself. Must find pastel colored native female. Execute prime directive. Uh, 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 hands so young looking. Mrs. Berg, I thought you were dead. Uh, uh, throat scratchy. Uh, Oh, hand so dry can scratch name into it. Uh. Oh, <laughs> embarrassing cuticles on fingernails. Uh, must utilize emotional memory uh, and get to... Uh, stop it, stop it. Stop? No, uh-uh. That was my big scene, hey, Joel. Yeah, we were just getting into it. This just isn't working. I don't know how Shatner does it week after week. I don't know why he does it or who lets him do it. I think we should just be glad he does it. Yeah. Oh, we got movie hey. What's the worst thing he's gonna... You know, that hand's not so tough. 
What's the worst thing he's gonna do to you anyway? Pinch you? <laughs> yeah, and how does he know how to go after you? He's got no brain and no yeah. leverage. Hey, what are you guys uh, talking about? Oh, we're just mocking this week's monster. I mean, what's a hand gonna do to you anyway? Oh, there's a lot of things a hand can do if you stop to think about it. Like if you're sleeping, comes up with these two fingers, shoves them up your nose, you suffocate. Stone dead. I hardly think that's possible. Or you could use this finger and come up behind somebody and tap them, whiplash, dead. Oh, yeah, right, I bet. Well, and, uh... Who knows what else? It's like you could do this thing, like that. You look down, tell you're bored to death or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right, Joel. Tell me about or, it. Or uh, let's say he had an accomplice uh, hand who was his friend, and they'd gang up on you and give you an Indian oh, rub like that. Stop it. Right, Joel. Sure. Tell us about it. I can't believe you guys don't know. Then there's the cuff, oh. chuck, gnaw, nor, crap, peck, flip. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Right. I don't think that hand could scare me anyway. Free roaming, rogue, disconnected, gloved. Even if it were connected to a forearm, it wouldn't bother me. Tickle you to death? Sure, but scary? Ha! Yeah, I knew a hand with calluses the size of a football, but it didn't scare me in the least. Joel, you uh, remember that, Joel? Joel. Ah! Oh, oh, oh! And uh, this is... Uh... Okay, you guys, that's the end of the movie. We made it. And uh, this hey. is uh, time for the Ram Chip episode where you say a good thing about the film and a bad thing. You get a Ram Chip, okay? Hey. Ready? Go ahead, Crow. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, the good thing was those cats showed us a new definition for finger food. Uh-huh. <laughs> finger. And the bad th- yeah. yeah. And the uh, bad thing. Uh, bad thing was, um, well, never trust a delivery man. Right. Okay, here's your Ram Chip. There you go. All right. Now, Tom Servo? Okay, the good thing was uh, there was a Swedish babe in the film who didn't get killed. Yeah, and the bad thing? Uh, she didn't spend the time on her makeup that it deserved as the film went on. Okay, here's your amp chip, pal. Oh. There you go. All right, well, we want to thank everybody who's been writing in, and I want to thank the mad scientist for faxing the letters back up to me. But anyway, this one's from Ricky Fowles, and he says uh, he wrote some letters, and this one's to you, Crow. Oh, hey, He thanks, goes, Ricky. Dear Crow, I really <laughs> like you. I laugh when you make a joke. So that's a good thing, right? Have I made one yet? Yeah. And I hope I can see you someday. All right. Take a look, kid. Yeah. And uh, Joel, someday I would like you to take apart Servo. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey, can I help? And I like Gypsy because he looks cool. Gypsy's a she, by the way. Uh, and that's from Ricky Fouts. And he also did some drawings. Uh, we got those in Still Store, don't we, Cambot? Okay, let's take a look at that. We got uh, one of Crow. And then Hello. it says, look on back, and you turn it around, and we got a Tom Servo there. Hey, See, isn't nice. that neat? And then on the next one, it says, Gypsy. It's like this. And then it says, look on back, and it's got Joel right there. See, I got a little light bulb above my head because I had a bright Perfect idea. Too. Yeah. All right, well, read the address, Crow. Keep the lar- cards and letters coming Can I do in, it? everybody. Servo, read it. Tom Servo, read okay. the letter there. All right, send your letters to the Mystery Science Theater Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Send them now. Right. Yay. Thanks a lot for watching. Scientists, I hope you're happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Are you happy, Clay? Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, Clay? Tell him. Are you happy? Uh, Tell him. Uh, uh, got to reach console. Got to end experiment. Oh! <laughs> Hey everybody, um, welcome to the Satellite of Love. Um, my name is Joel and I'm marooned in outer space and I guess in a way uh, you are too. Uh, I'm expecting a call from the evil overlord scientist who shot me into space pretty soon. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. So um, stick around, you know, we're going to find out what the movie is and then we're going to have an invention exchange and then we can get on with the experiment and then after that I guess you could get on with your lives. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Don't, don't go now. away. We'll be right back. This isn't going to hurt a bit. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh. hurt. Always be careful when Joel is using the laser torch, all right? See? Okay, look. You're, I'm done. I'm done already. I'm done. Here, okay, jump down. Here's your ram chip. Come on, there you go. Get out of here now. Oh, my evil overlords are calling me. Come in, sirs. Come in, Jolene, you pusillanimous poltroon. 
Hey, Serge, what's going on? What's up? Well, what's up every week at this time, you anti-gravitational sewage leak? It's the Invention Exchange, and this time we've got a real winner for you. Something that'll sure to please all of your frat buddies. It's a little something we like to call the mechanically inflating whoopee cushion. As we all know, the whoopee cushion has been a long-standing favorite among pranksters around the world. Yes. <laughs> this one's got a little twist, though. It's a self-inflating model, and it's filled with real methane gas. Get the picture? Larry? Ready? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, what do you think? I'm shocked. It's really sophomoric. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, what's your little contribution to science this week, Jolita, my little vacuum flower? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sirs, well, this is my new invention. It's called the Cumber Bubble Bun. It's something you wear when you want to make a big impression. Let's say it's your first day of school somewhere or you're uh, going in for a job interview. Just put on the Cumber bu Bubble Bun and you're on an automatic disco dance party. Hit the music, Cambot. Okay, stop it. I got a joke. You know, champagne goes right through me. <laughs> anyway. What do you think, sirs? Oh, very amusing. <sighs> anyway, your film today is Robot Monster. It's a classic film that was nominated for a Golden Turkey Award for being one of the foulest films ever. <laughs> See, to call this film wretched would just be an insult to the word wretched. It stars no one. Oh, man, you won't believe this. Yes, and to further your viewing displeasure, we have a double dose of that classic Commando Cody serial, Radar Men from the Moon. Deal with it, pink boy. Enjoy. Oh, movie side! Let's see if what we just saw in the movie could really happen. The airplane leaves Krog's cave at 4 p.m. It flies due north. Tom Servo, what's the estimated speed of a two-person single-engine plane? Let's see. Uh, assuming a tailwind of, let's say, uh, 30 miles per hour and figuring an average weight of 135 pounds for each passenger, I'd say uh, 123 knots, plus or minus 3% for the drag coefficient. Uh, are you compensating for a positive Doppler shift? Of course I am. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's 130 knots. How fast would Commando Cody have to fly to catch up to the plane? Crow? Uh, easy. Commando Cody would uh, need to rev up his rocket pack to 290 knots for 18 minutes. Of course, gentlemen, we're only theorizing here. In reality, it takes only one film edit to advance Cody to the plane. <laughs> right. It is just a serial. Anyway, the whole thing ends in a fiery plane crash anyway. Whoa! Like that. Very Ooh. nice. Well, as long as we're talking about reality here, uh, let's talk about that pumpkin head for a second. You know, even a ninth grader could see that with all the heaviness and position of the rockets on Cody's back, he'd be cartwheeling his butt all over Southern California. Right. But, Tom, remember, it's just a serial. It's only a show. This couldn't really happen. You know that uh, thing that Isaac Asimov said about King Kong's body being too huge? It couldn't happen physically. He'd crumble. Hmm. Yeah, he also argued that the incredible shrinking man could never have been uh, heard because his vocal cords would be so tiny his voice would be ultrasonic. Even dogs would have to go, what? Huh? But keep in mind, gentlemen, that physics has yet to legitimize the existence of Isaac Asimov's sideburns. Oh, yes, we see. It's exactly like the Invisible Man paradox. Oh. If he's truly invisible, he'd be blind because his retinas would be transparent. Oh, uh, well, I know one that's even true in real life that's unbelievable. Physics has yet to explain how bumblebees fly. Their bodies are too big for their wingspan. Physics says bumblebees can't fly, but they fly. Go figure, Tom Servo. Hmm. Wingspan, body weight, air resistance. Whoa! Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, Crow, any thoughts on the subject? Uh, what was the question again? Uh, the thing about bumblebees. Uh, oh, well, sure. Bumblebees can't fly. Big deal. So what? Oh! Oh, man. I gotta get more memory in these guys. Hey, Cambot, what do you think of that? About bumblebees not being able to fly? Servo, Servo. Servo, Servo, come in, my faithful servant. I am here, Your Excellency. 
Why have not you killed the human? Because he gives me crunchy treats, and he empties my load pan. But he is human, and unfit to live. But he's kind of cute. He has good bone structure, and he can drive a stick. There is no room for your petty sentimentality, or your... He can drive a stick? Uh, nevertheless, he is human. Kill him by sundown, or you will feel my wrath. Okay, I will try, but I do not think he is going to like it much. You have the effrontery to defy my orders? Oh, no, nothing like that, sire. I'm... I'm getting a call on the other line. I'm gonna have to put you on hold, O oh, Supreme Being of the Universe. Oh, rats, I gotta shut this thing off. This is no party line dolt. Try to play telephone tag with me, you clinkering, clankering mishmash of discarded Harley Davidson remnants. Oh, the Earthman approaches now. Destroy him. Oh, I, I must destroy the hey, Earthman. Hey, Crow, Tom Servo, what's up? Your number, I'm afraid. I must kill you, Mr. Huh? Bond. I must kill you now. Oh, oh. Joel! What happened? Uh, Tom Servo, his, his reason circuits must have burnt out. He tried to kill me. Oh, no, Joe. We were just doing a little role-playing. You know, kill the human role-play like in the movie. Oh, no. Tom Servo, buddy, you gotta oh. wake up. Oh, well, my aching uh, chemsphere. Man, what I'm, that? I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't know you were kidding. Oh, man. Somebody must have forgotten the robotic laws of Isaac Asimov, I, I think. I know, I'm sorry. A robot can never kill a human. Right. I'm really sorry. What can I do to make it up to you, Tom? You could let me kill you, Mr. Huh? Bond. You could let me... Oh, God! He was kidding. Oh, no, we got movies, son! Oh, no! I think I'm having heart palpitations. Oh, no. Oh, Joel, I think I'm having heart palpitations. This movie's really getting to me. Yeah, Joel, I think I'm developing an aneurysm. Please, no more movies. Come on, you guys aren't supposed to have human ailments. Besides, I think it's kind of cool in a dark, surrealistic sort of way. Well, so it's standing in front of a, a speeding snowmobile. No, you don't get it. You see, isn't it kind of weird? It's like there's a guy in a gorilla suit, and there's, he's got a robot head, and inside he's got kind of a bunch of clay... I mean, I've seen Dolly paintings that make more sense than this movie does. Yeah, but I think there's a fine line between surrealism and costume shop closeouts. I don't get it, Joel. Is it cool to make no sense? No, Is it's it hip to be vague? It's not cool to make no sense, but it's surreal. Oh, like hoppity hop a tang strawberry potatoes, climbing Mount Everest in tears. <laughs> right, <laughs> you Joel. got it. Right, look, even, even the cam bot's getting into it. Look at the monitor, yeah. Oh. Well, then, uh, we follow the dripping cows go Yugoslav cap-cutting in lederhosen. Right. Is that cool, though, Joe? No, it's not co cool, but it's surreal. Oh, oh it's kind of fun, too, really, if yeah. you think about it. Yeah, well, see you in the floating head Bantu peccadillo, Mr. McGree. Yeah, so long, Dolly. Got a rum hum ring noodle vortex. But dang whoa! <laughs> my robots, I think I'll crush grape jelly in my neck until the clocks come home. Whoa! with in honor of this week's film being over with the robots and i have organized a brief skit titled servo <laughs> the life and times of roman the roman pageant or in search of the historical robot monster fact Roman the Roman destroyed almost all of Earth's population save for six refugees, yet they all lived within a short walk of his cave. <laughs> Fact, Roman the Roman used a cosmic ray that kept the cities of the world intact to be enjoyed later by all Roman. Yet he lived in a cave, and not even a very good cave. Yeah, yeah slag heap. Uh, oh. <clears throat> Fact, Roman the Roman was an artificially created being devoid of any human passion, normal fears, tenderness, or forgiveness, ultimately lacking that which mortals cling to most. Humanity. <laughs> Yet he liked bubbles. <laughs> Roman the Roman came from a civilization light years ahead of Earth's, or at least the Earth portrayed in the film. Yet he frequently gestured like Howie Mandel. Go figure. We believe these truths to be self-evident and obvious. Please give to the United Robot College Fund. Because an internal hard drive is a terrible thing to waste. Think about it, won't you? What do you think, sirs? 
But we have sent a stranger person into space? What in the name of Jules Bergman was that? You think maybe he's had enough up there? I think he snapped. By no means. Here, file this. Well, until next week, jumpsuit Jolie. Thirty seconds to commercial time. Hey, morning, Carl. I'm Servo. I mean, Tom oh, Servo. Morning. Right. Hey, good morning, breakfast clubbers. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, here's a little morning poem. Birdie with the yellow bill hopped upon my windowsill, cocked his shining eye, and said, "What for breakfast, Grandma?" <laughs> oh, I hate morning bots. Yeah. Commercial time in fifteen seconds. Uh, that reminds me, my name is Joel, and I'm the subject of a bizarre movie-watching experiment, and now I guess so are you. We're expecting a call any minute from the quasi-evil overlords who shot me into space, so stick around. Yeah, of course, chipperness doesn't kill us first. Hey! Commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. Keep your head up, guys. Stick around, we'll be right back. And... There's the lady. Hey, okay, I'm busting. Right. Great. I'm busting. All right, double or nothing. Okay, little game of chance. Find the lady. There, they're calling. Come in, sirs. Come in, Joel. My little 398 all-you-can-eat space buffet. <laughs> hey, sirs, what's up? Hey, sirs, what's up? You know what's up. Make with the invention exchange, pasty boy. Hey, sirs, I'm ready. Hey, Cam, I'll bring it in a little bit. This is the thing I invented. For people who are studying to be cartoon characters, you know, it's like when a beautiful woman comes by in the cartoons, you go like this. Or like this. Kind of like that. And then you get into your upper level courses and you can do the walk by. She's great. And then followed by. See? What do you think? Not bad, not bad. Now, get an eye full of our little wonder. Yes, we've been dealing with genetic mutations since you were in short pants. And we finally applied our principles to carnival food. We came up with cotton candy that screams when you bite it. May I? Enjoy. Ow! That's my head! Ow! Well, what do you think of that, Jolarini? Huh? You're toying with God's blueprint, that's what I think. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Joel, we've got another cinematic compost pile for you called The Slime People. Oh, it's scabby and bumpy and absolutely hideous. But first, another space frolic with our bullet-headed friend, Commando Cody. Enjoy. All rise, hear ye, hear ye. The Honorable Judge Joel presiding. Please be seated. Bots versus Commando Cody, docket 212-349-7A. Your Honor, the bots will prove that the defendant, Commando Cody, is guilty of the following felony charges. Failure to follow a proper flight plan, reckless endangerment of the public, breaking the laws of physics and gravity, and acting as an officer of the law, and uh, simply bad acting. Commando Cody, how do you plead? We plead hardship, Your Honor. My client, Commando Cody, has more than paid his debt to society by being trapped in a pathetic cereal. Not to mention, he's kept the world safe from Krog and his death ray. I object. Power rule, present your case, Mr. Crow. Mr. Cody, in episode one, you tweaked your nipples and launched yourself into the air without first contacting the nearest FAA control tower, didn't you? Objection! The use of the term nipples is imprecise, incorrect, and misleading, though I'll admit, mildly provocative. Sustain! Mr. Cody, your flying stunts may look realistic on the silver screen, but in fact they are nothing more than simple blue screen tricks. Nothing more than Hollywood hocus pocus hoo ha! Objection, Your Honor! Mr. Mason is yet again engaging in another of a series of courtroom gymnastics. Uh, Your Honor, I'm simply trying to prove that Mr. Cody is nothing more than a fictional character in a lame series. Or a lame character in a fictional series. Your Honor, I shall prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Commando Cody is, in fact, real. I have here millions of letters delivered by the U.S. Postal Service who are never, or at least seldom, wrong. Letters from children of America who believe in Cody and what he stands uh, for. Uh, I object, Your Honor. My case on Cody is based on hearsay and rumor. Really? I thought it was uh, shoddy planning and poor thought. Well, they uh, Mr. Servo, where are these letters of which you speak? Hit it, Gambots! Uh, oh, I don't believe this. Out of order! You're out of order! He's out of order! We're all out of order! This courtroom is out of order! This we, country is out of we order! We got commercial side! Let's go! I don't understand.
understand why this movie was made. Joel, I don't understand why this movie was made. What's that, Crow? Why? Well, I, I just don't understand why someone would spend so much time trying to make a movie that was obviously conjured up over lunch. Yeah, it is sort of a loose end festival. Like, what are these slime people? They can't really be reptiles because reptiles need heat to live and they're trying to make it cold on the planet. Yeah, and how did they become slime people, living in the center of the earth and all? As far as I know, slime isn't exactly a naturally occurring element, even in the bowels of the earth. Yeah, I think it would have been much more believable if they would have made the monsters invading from space, you know. Then at least they could play by rules we can't even comprehend. Well, the thing is, you guys, the real beauty part of this movie is that it actually got made. You know, the guy who made it isn't a fool. He just convinced some people that it was worth making, you know, whether it was a good idea or it could make money or it satisfied some bizarre urge in the viewing public. Oh, I see. So it's the gullibility of humans that allows things like this to exist. I guess you're right, yeah. Oh, so I could make a movie about a giant applesauce monster who goes around smooshing up people's food until there's nothing left to chew on a planet, huh? Well, provided you could get someone to pay for it and think it was a good idea and worth making. Oh, well, I have a good idea for a show, then I'm sure it'll work. Okay, this guy gets stranded on a desert isle. He makes little mechanical friends from parts of his boat, and all day long they have to sit and watch reruns of bad TV shows, like a Super Train or a Greatest American Hero. Oh, uh, now what would they eat? It doesn't matter. You should just relax. It's just a show. Well, why would they be watching the shows then? Uh, how about if uh, Two Evil Commodores sends uh, the shows to them? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. It's very illogical. It wouldn't fly. Really? Yeah. No. Far fetched. Yeah. Oh well. Well, let's go think of some more, sir. Well, maybe we could get rich. Yeah. You know, you give life to two inanimate objects and they turn around and mock your entire species. You know, if I'm ever trapped in outer space again, I think I'm just going to bring blood. Oh, we got to be What's with all this smoke? Get up. What's with all this smoke? Get up here, you guys. Did you put a crack in the bipolar defroculator or something? Joel, what's the matter, Joel? You scared? No, I'm not scared. I just wonder what all this smoke's about. Come on. I'd be scared if I were you, Joel. The slime people could be somewhere in the fog. Yeah, Joel. Nothing scarier than a big boiled lobster with a bad oozing head cold, a big scaly wart and crusted crab monster leaking okay. mucus from every... Listen, okay, I get the point. Now, come on. I'm not scared, but I just got to know what's going on. Well, the truth is, Joel, we uh, rigged Gypsy's thermal conducer tube to create big billowy clouds of terrifying slime smoke. Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys have to learn there's nothing scary about a bunch of out-of-work actors parading around with paper mache skin condition. Yeah, they do kind of look like Quasimodo with eczema, don't they? Yeah, like a tree toad, <laughs> like with psoriasis, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Subterranean alligators and bodysuits come from underground to make a better life for themselves in L.A. Unfortunately, the only way they know how to communicate is by impaling people with prehistoric spears. And so they're not really so bad, they're just misunderstood, I think. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, say, Joel, yeah. uh, how come they have a machine that can create a solid rock-like wall out of fog, but they can't create, oh, say, a uh, gun? Well, uh, Crow, it's simple. It's easy to understand because it's just a movie. Oh, yeah. Right. I got to go check on Gypsy so this whole ship doesn't fill with smoke. You know, Crow, maybe next time we should uh, fill up the bridge with deli-style lemon and whip to, to scare him. Yeah, or seven layer salad. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Or taco. With peas and stuff. Oh, Reach we me. got commercial. The way the house is built. You know, Crow, I can always remember back on Earth the way the house was filled with the smells of Mom's home cooking. Uh, you mean your mom would cook your home? Uh, no, Crow. It's just an expression. It's like uh, nothing means loving, like something from the oven. You oh, know. yeah, an old expression. I, I, I know one of those. Uh, there was an old man from Nantucket. Uh, no, Fong. Ow. Sorry. No, it's nothing like that. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun today to make a silicone diode pie with a light rectifier crust. Oh, okay. you're going to put resistors in it again? Yeah, got some right here. Back. You don't like that? Anyway, take the resistors, uh, roll them out with a rolling pin. Ooh, that makes the crust crunchy. Yeah, put them in a uh, special silicon pan. Mm. Heat up your uh, crystal chamber for 20,000 degrees. Ooh. And we'll put that in. And I made one earlier I want to show you. Got have it ready for the show here. It's right here cooling on the window shade. Window sill. Oh. Oh, man. Gypsy, she ate almost half of it. Oh. Yeah, and the other half's on her mouth. Oh, I'm great. sorry, Joel. Such a messy eater. Anyway, that's okay. We got a letter to read here. Yeah, okay? read the one from uh, Deus Ex Machina. Right, good one. Okay, no, this wasn't from David. This is from uh, Sarah McCall. 
from North Carolina. She writes, Dear MST3000, Hi, how are you? My name is Sarah, and I'm 14 years old. I love MST3000. It's so good. Joel is my most favorite person on the show. The only person. Uh, yeah, I'm the only person. Anyway, uh, I love the ad libs. They all say I'd watch MST3000 anytime till it goes off. That's hopeful. Boy. Thank whoever made it up. Please try to get me an address where I can write. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah McCall. Hey. So, we hey. got an address for you. Crow, you want to give it to him? Cam, I'll put it up on the screen there. The MST3000 Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Well, sirs, that's the end of our experiment. What do you think? Oh, I'm beside myself. Clay? Oh, I'm thrilled to my marrow. I'm happy! Out! I'll file this. Yes, do that. Well, until next time, Team Dream. <laughs> Commercial Hi everybody, I'm Joel, as you know, and I'm on the satellite of love here. Yeah. We're trapped out in outer space. Just got done cleaning up the robots for the experiment this week. Mm. All nice and clean, there you go. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Okay, I guess we got a com uh, commercial coming up real soon, and uh, we're expecting a call from the evil scientists as well, so you might want to stick around. Commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2, commercial sign now. Stick around, we'll be right back. A cow. A bowl of quisp. A Gutenberg printing press. A, oh, the first level ROM card of the Cray-1 supercomputer, Generation C, 1987. Right. Yes, oh. yes. All right. Yes. Hey, the scientists are calling. Come in, Joel, my little spunk dumpling. Hey, sirs, is it time for the invention exchange? No, it's time for the AAU swim meet. Yes, it's time for the invention exchange. There's a lot, Sparky. All right, sirs. This week, I've got a new way of juggling water. Okay, you're going to help me, Crow. You're going to pitch to me. So take okay. this turkey uh, baster. Uh -huh. Carry it over there. Take All it right. over that All away. Right. Okay, and I've got these two ping pong paddles, okay, with special surfaces that repel water. Okay, and Crow, on the count of three, I want you to shoot a jet of water here, okay? Okie dokie. Ready? Uh -huh. One, two, three. Nice shot. Uh -huh. Um... Park it up a little bit, Crow, on the count of three. Sorry. Let's go. One, two, three. Perfect. Good. Got it. Okay. Oh. See? Look it. I'm juggling water, you guys. Cool. See? Under the leg. Wow. Oh. Over the cool. back. Here hey. we go. See? Just like that. See? Whoops. Oh. Dropped it. What do you think, sirs? Oh, I've seen more impressive tricks on a box of Cracker Jacks. Well, there are those little uh, tattoo things. Those lick Larry. Out. Larry. Now, our invention this week combines the arty effect of the old Etch-A-Sketch with the educational payoff of Uncle Milty's Ant Farm. We call it the Insect-A-Sketch. Larry? What we've done is we've taken the normal directional capabilities of the ant and scrambled them with an ultrasonic directional device, a little guidance system of our own. See? I wrote my name! <laughs> yes, and like its predecessor, it clears with a shake. Very nice, Larry. Now make me a picture of Jokey Smurf. Okay. I'd love to. Well, what do you think? Uh, I, I think it could really bruise a child's tender psyche. Thank, Thank you. you! Well, our movie this week is called Project Moonbase, and it features a group of astronauts almost as inept as you are, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and a plot as weak as herbal tea. <laughs> yes, but first, how about a double dip of our old friend Commando Cody and the radar men from the moon? <laughs> Interesting reaction. What do you think, Larry? I think I'm almost done. See, I just got to get the little curved Smurf hat in. Give me this. <laughs> Taste the pain, buddy. Enjoy. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. Okay, Ted. Okay, Ted, stop here. I'm going to hover here for a moment and survey the landscape. Okay, now I think I'm going to fly over to that window and look for those rotten radar men from the moon. Are you done yet? No, I'm not done yet. Okay, let's do a flyby of that nudist colony. Swing it into high, Teddy. I feel the need. The need for speed. Come on, Servo. Who? I mean, Commando Servo. I think Krog wants to talk to us. You're a good little helper, Ted. Let's go. Come on. Hey, you guys. I mean, 
Earth men, I want you to take an atomic bomb the size of a pineapple, strap it to a Piper Cub, and then crash into Mount Vesuvius. Then, on your way back, swing by Al's and pick me up a uh, Swiss cheese on a cow's a roll. Oh, I can't get into this. Joel, I want to be Commander Cody for a while. Tad, who is that squeaky little worm in the caftan down there? It's Krog, and he wants to wear your costume. Does he have any idea who he's dealing with? I could... Ah, your servo and Joel's holding you up. Pay no attention to the man holding me up. Take me down, Ted. I'm on a roll. Oh, come on, servo. Don't be such a baby. All right, Krog, the jig is up. Put down that cheese pistol and fight me like a man. Oh, jamming in your Venturi, bubblehead. Come Let's on, go, give me that gun. Hey, 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 hey. Save my commercial sign. Uh, As illustrated in... As illustrated in this film, thank you, Cambot, the tie of the future will be cut short to eliminate the age-old morning question, is it appropriate to tuck my tie into my pants? In the future, it won't even be an option. In fact, there'll be no room in the future for fashion blunders when the short guy, a go-go tie, swings into high. But what other roads will the tie take in days of future past? To start things off, Tom Servo, who we call Cheeky, is sporting the Hexfield body tie from the year 4000. That's right, whether you're inside, outside, or upside down, the Hexfield body tie fits and fits. Very nice, Tom. Thank you. Don't talk to me. I'm a high fashion model from the future. Sorry, Tom. Um, I'm wearing the anti gravit tie. This tie is a brainchild of the defective fashion jackals direct to you store. It implies to the travel conscious that you're no stranger to anti-gravity space travel. Pop-up sleeves are optional. Crow from the planet Ulio Kuriakin rages on into the year 9000 with a tie that acknowledges men will always dribble. It senses the soup on your lips, reaches up and dabs the soup away. And now, our own Tom Servo is back, just out of the dressing room, I might add, in the nick of time, with the ultimate tie designed for our friends from the Church of the Future Machismo Irony. They guarantee this will stay as stylish for millennia to come. This tie is from the Warp Burning Plastic Collection, again from those fashion drones on Maja 5. This tie automatically lengthens to ever-changing tides and trends of fashion. It's Spackham, as seen. It's new. It's improved. It's Spackham, as seen in the movie Project Moonbase. Yes, Spackham, the miracle home product you thought you'd never need. Part wood, part industrial resin, part pasteurized processed cheese food product. That valuable china crack? No problem. Just a dab of Spackham will do the trick. Try Spackham on an onion roll for a real lunchtime treat. Takes care of rust on that old jalopy, and ladies will just love how Spackham removes those nagging liver spots and planter's wards. Slice thin for a fabulous roast substitute. Kids will just have a ball with Spackham. Change your mother into a basketball and drive out rodents and other household pets. Including Put Spackham in your next oil change to lubricate and remove diaper rash while it whitens your wash and melts those pounds away. Mike Polynesian Cheese Devils with a little marshmallow cream, a handful of crunchy fire ants, and lots of velvety Spackham. Eskimos love the way Spackham takes the gum out of diesel generators. Mom loves the way it cleans jewelry. Dad loves the way it takes the paint off that old table in the attic. And kids just love it for a snack anytime. Massage it into your scalp for a refreshing change of mind. Rub it into your chest and feel the petroleum vapors go to work. Not an aerosol, not a paste, and not available in any store. It's Spackham! And it's available at this one-time, low, low, everyday bargain price. And if you order now, you'll receive a no-extra-charge a year's supply of Spackum. Cuts through this tomato like it was a tin can. Snapples, caps off, jars, bottles, and the baby. And boy, does it catch fish. Cards and letters, they really help pull... Oh, we finally got through that one. Hey, thanks, everybody, for your cards and letters. They really help pull us through. Yeah, we thought the Lord was going to call Joel home until we got this card. Yeah, Kimba, can we show a picture of this one? Crow, you want to read that one, buddy? Yeah, it says, please send us info on the MST 3000 fan club. We enjoy it very much. Thanks. Happy holidays from the both of us. Whoa, look at these Swedes. Whoa. Yeah. You know how they say when people get married, they start looking alike. These two have been together a long time. My it's, turn, my turn. Okay, let her go, uh, Mr. Tom Servo. There. Right you are, Slappy. This one comes from uh, Jeff Conrad in Bloomington, Minnesota. Greetings, I've been a long-time fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh, a group of friends and I watch it every week on videotape. Hey, tell me, will the new shows be in color or all in black and white? Uh, sincerely, Jeff Conrad. Well, and we got this last one here from Fabulous Hawaii. Ooh. Yeah. And it says, ah. Dear Sirs, I'd like to join your fan club. Please send me information, membership cards, large sums of money. 
Very funny. That's from Sam Litzinger from Honolulu. Hello. Uh, yeah, Tom Servo, why don't you read that information for the people on uh, Earth? Put it up there, Cam. I'll give it to me one time on the uh, CG uh, Helvetica Bowl, will you? All right, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Send your cards and letters quickly. All right, I guess that ends the experiment, sirs. Uh, when are we going to get some color movies? Color? You want color? Talk to Ted Turner. Here, file this. Consider it filed. Well, hasta luego for now, my little spud bunny. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Joel. I'm marooned up here in outer space. Uh, I'm all alone except for the companionship with my two robot friends that I are of my own design. There are two evil overlord scientists that are uh, sending me horrendous films, but I can handle it because I'm a human. Two, three. Hey there, you people in front of your TVs. Sitting along that line. I'll be back from the commercial in a few minutes time. Commercial time in five, four, three, two. Commercial time now. Ain't that a human? You am a and a human, human, you. Cheese it, you guys get rid of the harps, it's the overlords. Good day, my muddy waters wannabe. Hey, sirs, how's everything on Earth? How would we know? We've been subterranean for 93 days. We're as abstracted from reality as you are. Maybe more. Gee, don't say hi. Well, is it time for the invention exchange? Is it time for the invention exchange? Yes. Show us what you've got, pink boy. Well, you know how it is on Earth when, um, you know, they have those giant enclosed stadiums and you can't smoke in it. And I always thought it was kind of peculiar because you can drive giant hell-belching monster trucks, but you can't smoke, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Well, so I invented this thing. It's a thing for smokers, and it's a monster truck. I call it the uh, nitro-burning funny pipe, okay? And I just start it up here, okay? And then I uh, light a match here. Ow! Yeah. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We'll see Joel's one turn into a giant. Wow, that's real gear crushing, tire popping, tobacco satisfaction. Oh, yes, uh, very nice, although we don't smoke. Well, here's ours, Jolly Ace. As you know, face masks throughout history left the bank robber or thug completely expressionless. Well, we've taken care of that. Larry? We've invented the stocking mask of the future with articulated eyebrows. <laughs> yes, no longer will a desperate criminal go misunderstood. The SM of F takes care of that completely. Uh, the demo, Larry? All right, put $10,000 in the bag. Unmarked bill right now. Hey, ladies. Oh, oh, it works. Cool. All right. See, if you touch that alarm button, I'm going to have to rip off your fingers and you're going to have to reattach to the nearest hospital with laser surgery. It's really cool they do that. Larry. Sorry. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I use six bullets or only five. See all the excitement? I don't know myself. <laughs> I saw it in a movie. It's really good. Clinton. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, that's our experiment this week, Joel. Uh, now, the movie is a greasy little sci-fi number called Robot Holocaust. And it's in color. Yay! But it's edited for television. <laughs> Ooh. Roots you must never enjoy, Jolene. But there's more. I know, Commando Cody, right? Exactly. Deal with it, smart boy. <laughs> enjoy. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, hey, what happened? Hey. Uh -huh. What film? What film? Hey, you guys, I think I got it going. Cool. Yeah, it's working. Great. It really is in color, too. Look. Just the last one.
Peeking through the knot hole. Stop, and human, you have entered the Wii Zone. A world that revolves around us and only us. All right, well, I was just going to the galley to get some food, you know, and what do you want? No one crosses the Wii Zone without doing something for us first. Okay, uh, what what do you want me to do? You must do the disappearing coin trick. Yeah, good idea. All right, I can do that for you. Remember how it goes, right? Mm -hmm. Start with an ordinary quarter, right? And then I start rubbing it on my elbow like that. See that cam box? Okay, and... Oh, oops, I didn't get it to disappear yet. Drop Let's it. try it again. I take the quarter and rub it, and it's gone. Hey, cool. cool. Okay, can I go now? Now you must uh, walk us on the ceiling. No growing walk character. Us. You must walk us on the ceiling. You guys, human. you guys know uh, you're getting way too big for that. I can't walk you on the ceiling. What else you want me to do? Mm, you must create a severe weather condition inside the satellite. Yeah. Like what? You know the Chinese snow trick. Oh, I can't do snowstorm in China. It's in the shop. I'd have to go get it. What can I do that's real quick? Uh, and do I can... goofus face for us. Yeah, oh, crazy duck face. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, not the island! Oh, 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 I hate that. All right, can I go now? Uh, no, you must, uh, do for us a handstand. Yeah. Okay, if I do a handstand, can I go then? Oh, of course. All right, sure. All right, let's try it here. All right, ready? Handstand on the count of three. Three, two, one, and up! Oh, uh, uh, how's that, you guys? Shoes untied. Okay, and down. Uh, uh. Uh, there. All right, I'm going to go to the galley now. You guys want anything? Just yes, human. Well, now that you mention it, uh, ravioli would be nice. Ravioli, yeah, and okay. uh, I'd like a club sandwich. Oh, and could you pull the extra bread out of the middle? I hate that. Okay, no problem. I'll see you around. I love dinner theater. Yeah, you know it, pal. Oh, boy, I've got a day with the McCuffey. Oh, boy, I've got a day with the McCuffey triplets. They're contortionists. The mathematic possibilities are mind-boggling. <laughs> Hey, Servo. What's up? Got a day with the McGuffey triplets, Crow. Well, better bring a calculator. <laughs> or an abacus. Why an abacus? One of them is Chinese. <laughs> if you're dating triplets, you're going to have to go borrow Father O'Leary's van. Oh, but he'll never let me borrow it. Unless he thinks we're going to, to a, a church, church meeting. <laughs> Hi, guys. Up, up, and away. What's going on? Oh, nothing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Trying to hang it out. Uh, it sounds like Cambot's uh, sitcom simulator is kind of out of whack. I better... Ow! 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 My knee! <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Yeah, Joel, this is awful. We got to shut it off somehow. Okay, Cambot, give us a regular picture. Better. I guess we've learned not to toy with the laws of television. It was after the robots had taken... It was after the apocalypse. It was after the robots had taken over the Earth. There stood a lone, desperate survivor in a dark, dangerous time. Crow the Hunter and his animal boy, Gikor. A lonely human, dressed in the skins of those lesser on the food chain, but not by much. The boldest of them all was Servo the Bloodletter, Servo the Chirping Hellbeast, Servo the Defiler of all that is... Oh, yeah, okay. So the Lonely Triumvirate strode forth in a search for the mephetic terror awaiting them in the dark, evil power quadrant. Uh, hey, could we stop at a Wendy's first, guys? Uh, Geekor here wants a Frosty in a bad way. Silence, beaked fool! You dare to mock the power of the Dog Wand? The Black Wand? Dark one? What? The dark one! The dark one! Oh, oh. dark one. Oh, listen, you know, Tom Sewer, I'm not getting too into this. I feel kind of like King Vitamin miscast in a Sonny and Cher video. And besides, are these real furs or what? Yeah, what are we wearing? Roadkill here? I mean, hey, these, uh, th these, these furs are either cruel or unsanitary, depending on your point of view. Well, it's... It's after the apocalypse and everything, and, well, we got the furs from the dead animals littering the countryside. Ah, roadkill. See, I told you, Joe, we're wearing roadkill. Oh, that's just great. Tom Servo's having some kind of right-wing conservative uh, fur party, and uh, okay. I think we should just leave him, Crow. Uh, let's let Mr. Narcissus alone here so he can have his own party of access. Let's get out of here. Yeah, see you at the seal clubbing meeting. Not. Oh, my God.
He stood proudly, the bold survivor of the weak and unwilling race. You're all my friends, aren't you? Tell me your deep, dark secrets, my little furry friends. We'll roam the countryside and we'll be one together. Let's have another look. Okay, you guys, it's finally the end of the experiment. And um, let's have another look at that uh, plant guy again. Cambot, you want to fish out that frame 5236? There he is up there, guys. Whoa, you know, even though he looks scary, Joel, I still get a little hungry just looking at him. So uh, we've decided this uh, guy is too good to keep to ourselves. So we're going to sponsor a Name the Plant Guy brainstorm. Right. It's brainstorm, everybody. So join in. Send in your name for the plant guy. And the top 13 will be read on Mystery Science Theater on the satellite alone. Send your plant guy brainstorm entries to Mystery Science Theater 3000 Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Uh, we've come up with a few starters of our own to help you uh, name the plant guy. Uh, number one, Guacamole Wilson. I've got number two. Mine is Limbless Mucus Encrusted Avocado Man. And number three, Carl. So, well, that finishes up this week's experiment. What do you think? What, what about, about the letter? Oh, oh, oh yeah, got it right here. This is from a father-son team. First is from Donnie. He writes, he's the dad. My son and myself would like to join the MST3K fan club. That scares the hell out of me because he's only seven and I'm 36. And then later on, we've got some from Bill, the son, who says, Hello, Joel. I'd like to tell Crow that he's funny. Hey. And that I like the part when he said he's out of bang, bang. I don't really remember that. Um, Maybe he'd get off the sugar cereals. Yeah. And Joel, I'd like to tell you that when all said, nice tag, and Tommy is bubblegum head without a slot. P.S. All of tag thing again for him on three. Yeah. One, two, three. Nice, nice tag. tag. P.S. All of you are funny. Thank you, Bill and Donnie. Bastard. Thank you, Bill and Donnie. Thanks. How's that, sir? Good job, Mr. Memory. I think you should file this, Larry. Until next time, Skippy Drawers. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the Satellite of Love. My name's Joel, I'm still marooned out in space, and if you just tuned in, I guess so are you. Uh, we're expecting a call from the nasties who uh, shot us up here any second now, right? Uh, by the way, if you're going to go uh, during the commercial and make a snack uh, while you're digging in the refrigerator, think of me. Uh, Get something delicious and nutritious uh, because I'll be eating vicariously through you. So. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. Be right back, okay? Yeah. Cool. Oh, try not to look so happy, you guys. Here come the mad scientists. They're calling. Come in, Joel, my little free floating vacuum monkey. Hey, sirs, what's up? Well, not my hair. It's limp and lifeless. I don't know what to do. Just get out of the invention exchange. Stop looking at me! Uh, yes, uh, what have you got for us, Joel Arini? Well, sirs, the things that I've been working on is this new way of teleporting food. In the future, they're not going to have drive-through windows anymore. They'll have drive-by windows. You just drive your car, car by and they teleport the food right into your stomach using something like this. Okay, I put this on, look at an ordinary cookie, and whoa, delicious. Mm -mm. Now here we'll try it with a glass of milk. This is the big slurpy size. Hey. It went down. Mm -mm. Teleportation. What do you think, sirs? Oh, very nice, Jolie Cakes. Uh, Larry, make a note to call James Doohan. Oh, here's our new development, an entirely new concept in oral hygiene. Yes, we've employed some of Hollywood's top stars to help us with our new mouth-to-mouth -mouth celebrity toothpaste. Feel the cleaning power of the star's internal juices as they go to work on plaque and tartar buildup in your mouth. Here's Jack Nicholson from Witches of Eastwick. <laughs> Mr. Creosote from Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Somebody get a bucket I'm gonna throw out. And Linda Blair with real head-cranking action. Your mother flosses in hell. Ah! 
Well, what do you think, Joe Larini? Uh -huh. uh, well, I think four out of five dentists are going to recommend psychotherapy for you two. Thank you. Well, Joe, your film today is called Moon Zero Two. It's a late 60s romp through the then lunar crazed consciousness of America. And <laughs> believe me, it doesn't stand up to the test of time. <laughs> Stew on the broth of this one, lumpy boy. Enjoy. Oh, we got movie set! Oh! On July 22, 1969, a man first set foot on the surface of the moon. His name? Vince Lombardi. No, <laughs> see, it's Neil Armstrong. This is our tribute to astronaut Armstrong and the men who brought him to the moon. Crow will play the part of Neil Armstrong. That's one small step for man. Save it. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Joel will play the part of the second man on the moon, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and President John F. Kennedy. I'll play the part of Mission Control and astronaut Michael Collins orbiting the moon. Okay. Ready? Okay. Cue Joel. Ask not what your country can do for you, rather what you can do for your country. It was 1962 and a young president, John F. Kennedy, makes a bold <clears throat> promise. By the end of this decade, we will send a man safely to the moon and return him safely home. Uh, not bad, Joe, but, you know, you sound a little, about, a little bit like Cliff from Cheers. Ugh. This is my big scene. Not quite ten years later. Oh, uh, thank you. Forty feet, down two and a half. Picking up some dust. Thirty seconds. Contact light, okay. Engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys down here about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. No? No. Okay. I'm on the pad now. I'm jumping off. Ugh. That's one small step for a, a man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> okay, here I come. I'm coming down out of the, the lunar uh, module. Uh, hey, Joel, how come your costume's not very good? Well, well, I had to be the president and Buzz Aldrin, too, oh, okay? okay. Oh, man, did it... Do you have your keys? I just locked ourselves out of the lounge. No, what? You what? Oh, wow, oh, that's we, one, I'm gonna, one small screw-up for you, one giant screw-up for you. I'm going to have to go our find passion. that uh, thing. kind of dumb... Just thinking about that kind of dumb Moonopoly joke they got in there. It's just a stupid pun, but, it, you know, in the future, the games we play now are going to be a, a lot different with the future element involved. You know, like a Twister will probably be played on your tongue. Uh, yeah, and uh, Nintendo uh, would be Moontendo with the Super Lunar Mario Brothers. Right. Well, risk is riskier. Right, and sorry will seem to be the hardest game. And uh, say you're playing Clue, and uh, the answer might be Colonel Mustard in the command module uh, with uh, laser bolos, because uh, it's uh, spaceship. Yeah, uh, part cheesy will be green cheesy. Right, Skittle Bowl will be the same, but it'll take a l even longer to set up because of no gravity. Shoots uh, uh, and ladders is replaced by vacuum tubes, uh, you know, like on the Jetsons, because that's the only way they can get around from yeah, place to place. Yeah, Candyland's the same, but you should see the new flavors they've got. Right. Uh, uh, kaboom! Is called Don't Smoke in the Ship because it's an oxygen-rich atmosphere and uh, you could blow up and right. that would be... Yeah. Right, and they won't have mice because they'll need to use them for research. You well, know, so you no can't play mousetrap. Right, right, okay. Yeah. Edge Sketch will finally be able to draw curved lines, I bet. Yeah. And uh, scruples aren't around anymore because people won't have any. Trivial Pursuit will be Trivial Moon Suit. Yeah, and now it's uh, Win, Lose, or Draw. is called Win, Lose, and Draw Oxygen. Right. <laughs> uh, password has been replaced by Games Higher in Fiber. Well, <laughs> I got a game from my past that's in my present, and I think we'll keep going into the future. You know how it works, guys. It's uh, Rock'em Sock. Rock'em Robots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I knocked his block off. But you can press it back down again. It's Rock'em Robots. Oh, I like that.
the babe with the boy servo what a great movie great actresses too i like the babe with the great uh, haircut the one with the eddie munster page boy look nah i like the gator headed chick the one with the eel skin skull cap no way Ugh. Hey, watch it. You're talking about the woman I love here. She's got style. She's got looks. She's got a 45 strapped to each thigh, and she knows how to use them. <laughs> She's a darn sight better than that twiggy little stick woman you have your eyes on. Hey, what are you saying? All I'm saying is that you little thin-limbed, scrawny, empty-headed types seem to stick together so well. Oh, you want a piece of me? I'm standing right here. When this is over, you and me going round and round, bado a bado. Hey, come on, hey. you guys. What's going on? Break it up here. What's the problem? Hey, stay out of this, Joel. This is between me and the fire plug. That's it, that's it. Stand back, Joel, you're using my oxygen. Come on, let's go. Listen, you guys, if there's gonna be a fight, we're gonna do it my way. Not that... Whoa. Kids, when you got a beef, don't take the law into your own hands. Take it to zero G. Anti-gravity. It's not just for breakfast anymore. Hey, Gypsy, how you doing? All right, it's the end of the movie. Hey, Gypsy, how you doing? Good, okay, it's good to have you back. And it's Thank you, Gypsy, you're good, okay. Now, you know what we're gonna do next is do movie review game. And that means, tell me a good thing and a bad thing about the movie, and you get Ram Chip. Okay, Tom Servo, you go first. Well, this movie made my gorge rise. Okay, and a, and a bad thing. And <laughs> okay, seriously, yeah. I thought that the movie uh, provided an opportunity for us to examine the various inaccuracies often portrayed in airsoft space movies such as this one. I see. You're really bucking for that ram chip, aren't you, pal? Yep. Well, uh, I like you. You're a good self-starter, and I like the cut of your jib. Here's your ram chip, Pally. Mm. All right. Mm. Mm. All right, Crow, how you doing? Ah, uh, fine. Do you want to tell me what good thing and a bad thing about the movie? Uh, it was groovy, and I mean that in a good way. Okay, and the bad thing? It was groovy. Right, you mean that in a bad way, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly, okay. Ready? Are you ready, girl? Okay, tell me a good thing and a bad thing about the movie. Richard Basehart? Oh. Richard Basehart. Okay, That's where wrong. you get a ram chip. What? There, yeah. Okay, good. That's wrong. All right, okay, well, we got another letter to read, and uh, thanks for everybody who's written in so far. They really help us keep going up here in space. Tamba, can we have that up on the screen? This one comes from a guy named Ryan Weisbrock from Illinois. Dear Joel, Tom Serbol, and Crow. Tom Serbol. Great. I'm 14 years old. I love your show. I start laughing so hard when you make comments during the movie, tears come to my eyes. Tom Serbol is the best because his voice is so Thank deep you. when he, he makes a joke. It sounds funny like when he said, oh, I hate to shoot a butt like that. Oh, I hate to shoot a butt like that. All right, anyway, he uh, later Magical. asks about being Serbo, and uh, it's Tom Servo, but uh, it's an honest mistake. Anyway, there's a picture here, too. Show that, Cambot. It's really a good artist, actually. So anyway, that ends the experiment for today. What do you think, sirs? What about the address? I got it. I got it. Okay. Send it to the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Fan Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Send them quick. Oh, not bad, not bad. Hey, how's my hair now? Go like this. You look like big boy. File that. Until next time, flabby cakes. <laughs> Thirty.
30 seconds to commercial sign. Hey everybody, I'm Joel. I'm marooned in outer space on the satellite of love, and I'm the subject of a bizarre movie-watching experiment. Now I guess uh, so are you. I'm up here with my two homemade buddies, Crow and uh, Tom Servo here, yeah. And uh, we're working on Tom Servo now, I think, uh, trying to fix him up. Hey, watch what you're doing there. It's the only torso I have. Commercial sign in 15. Well, I think I found the problem here, oh, buddy. Way. Some kind of a computer virus happening. Oh, here. grody. It looks like a magnetic tapeworm. Uh, yeah. oh, commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2, Commercial sign now. I got it. Uh, you'll be ship shape in no time. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You'll be real gone. All right. That ought to do it, buddy. Hop down and grab yourself a lollipop. Oh, I feel like a new man. I don't know what you did, but my back hasn't felt this good in months. I'm cooking with Crisco now. <laughs> Funny, you don't look any better. Uh-oh, you guys. Look downcast. The big cheeses are calling. Come in, Joel the Mole, my little frosted sponge cake. Hey, Serge, what are you wrecking today? Oh, nothing, really. We're just kind of hanging out and, you know, it's... Larry, it's magic time. Make with the invention exchange, plebe. Well, as you know, even avid smokers can't stand the smell of a tar belching pipe. And so I invented this, the Neverlight pipe. It's got a sophisticated uh, sprinkler system built in with a smoke detector. So anytime somebody oh, tries to light up, see, it puts it out for you. See, I'll try it on there. Ouch. Like that. They should never, ever be able to light up with this no thing. No more. It's not supposed to work. What do you think, sirs? I think it's almost as clever as the Prince Albert in a can gag. <laughs> I love that gag. It's great. I don't let him out. He'll suffocate. <laughs> now get ready for our part. Larry? Larry? Now, Larry and I have discovered that children adore putting things in their mouth, and they love puppets. We've combined the two, put a little spin on it. We call it Tongue Puppets. The show, Larry. Hey. It's me, Mr. Skanky. Oh, I love everybody's here. That's what I want to say. And I'm getting faster. <laughs> Bye. I think you might win the award for the most unsanitary toy. Well, thank you. Thank you That's really much. nice. Well, well done. Congratulations. Absolutely. It's about nice time. Job. Oh, brother. We well, finally well got one. Excellent. It's about time. It's yeah. great. Right. Uh, oh. <laughs> Your film today, Joel, is a little teen exploitation film called Untamed Youth. And, uh, well, it stars the grand dame of pimply teenage romps, the queen of adolescent angst, Mamie Van Hooter. Doran. Doran. Mamie Van Doran. It's got hip cats, cool chicks, insensitive authority figures, and a few show-stopping production numbers. Enjoy, if you can. Oh, we got to Hey, are you ready, you guys? Ready. Yep. Okay, today we'd like to present our pageant, Greg Brady, an American Legacy. Mm -hmm. Greg Brady, the eldest of Mike Brady's three boys, began his public life at the age of 14 when his widow or father married Widow Carroll, who was bringing up three very lovely girls. He lived with his large family in a very spacious split-level house in a Los Angeles suburb. He attended Warren G. Harding High School, where he was considered dreamy. Life wasn't all peaches and cream for Greg Brady. The pressures of a huge step family often caused things to go wrong. Sharing a bedroom with two brothers would cramp Greg's style. He later proceeded to move into the den and made it very mod. Mm -hmm. He wasn't ready for the den life, so he moved back to the security of his brother's room. But again, he felt crowded and he eventually settled in the attic. The attic was good for Greg. There he blossomed into a man. Nurturing his singing career, just trying to forget the troubles of growing up, like the time his hair got turned orange. Or when Bobby left his jumping frog in the back of Greg's car when he had a date. Oh, the carnage. Anyway, but that was his past life. Life was good now. In 1971, Greg was receiving 6,500 fan letters a week. That and his studies at Harding High kept Greg busy. Mm -hmm. Then in 1974, Greg was faced with the biggest shock of his life. His family was canceled. Without a primetime audience, Greg's world began to crumble. 
There were attempts to revive his family, but none succeeded. He had hit rock bottom. Greg couldn't even get a suite on a love boat. Brady, Brady lunchbox in hand, Greg headed for New York. Musical theater would give him a last chance. He appeared in the Broadway production of Pippin, but then disappeared. <laughs> it seemed America had lost Greg Brady. He was nowhere to be found until Christmas, 1988. Greg was found at a hospital in California. It was him. It was Dr. Greg Brady. He had become a doctor. Greg Brady. He returned to his boy home, boyhood home with his entire family, and a very Brady Christmas was had by all. Thank you. What? Craig, Craig Brady. Brady. We have a satellite of love. Salute you. You are one of the good ones. Thank you, Greg. You are groovy. Helping Joe with a very... Helping Joe with a very important project. We were on a satellite of love, and boy, if I wasn't there, it really would have gone badly. Gypsy lies dormant. Her central nervous sympac temporarily shut down. I'm helping Joel, who's working tenaciously with the skill and cavalier quality of a dermatologist performing his 50th routine face sanding. Ugh. We were on the satellite of love. And is aligned by adjusting the left horizontal gyro and synchronizing the output signal with the feed input signal on Cambot's digital array motherboard. What are you doing? Um, what are we doing again, Tom? So uh, we're linking a Gypsy's cerebral data disk to Cambot's visual output device. Take a look at what she's thinking. It's Can great. I help? No, last time you helped on a project, we had to jettison a whole pan of burning rock candy into deep space. Can I watch? Yeah, but just be careful and don't touch anything. Okay. I think I got this thing all figured out. Let's hook it up and see what happens. Input 3B. Okay, got it. All right, it's all hooked up. Let's see how she looks. Just turn on Gypsy's higher brain functions now. I'll do it. I, I, no, do no, it. let me do it here. I'll okay. get it. Cambot, just roll back the entire contents of Gypsy's brain and put it on the main viewer. This won't take long. Shh. Well, this will be the first time anyone has ever been able to see what a computer is actually thinking. Well, there it is. What is it? Oh, it's an 8x10 of Richard Basehart and some RAM chips. Oh, brother, another great mystery of the universe explained. Well, it could be worse. How? It could have been uh, Bob Eubanks she was dreaming about. True. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, hi, girl. girl. How you doing? Oh, I had a dream. I know you had a dream and we were all in it, right? No, none of you were there. Oh, boy. Oh, Cambot, flash forward out of this turkey. We actually oh, saw what you were thinking, Gypsy. Hey, Crow Buddy, come on, what's wrong? What are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was daydreaming. What did you say? I was just... Wait. We got movies! Jesus! Ah! Look at this, you are... Oh, Gypsy, honey, look at this. You are sick, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Hey, oh, honey, Joe, this down, is great. Down, girl. This oh. is great, Kawabunga! I feel like Rosemary Clooney in White Christmas. Having a little trouble with that uh, gypsy unit, huh? Yeah, it's something with her off switch, I think. I can't get it to stop. Uh, the weather on. outside is frightful. Hey, this is great. The weather outside, <laughs> I know a wiener man. Maybe you, you should have her uh, fabricate something less messy, like uh, saltwater taffy. Oh, I don't think that... Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. just great, Tom. That's just great. I've got a sick robot on my hands, and all you do is give me more stupid commands. <laughs> to deal with. Oh, we've got a mess. Maybe she should uh, bring up some paper towel. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Tom, that's it. Get out. No, I am just having some fun. Out. Can't take advantage of a robot anymore. Would you get out of here? Stupid human. Hey, get out. Make another Tom Servo. Leave me alone. Oh. Happy birthday. Hey, I feel like Rosemary Coney. Uh, Joel. Carl, how are you? Get ya? out of here. Hey. Hey, I don't you know, care if you're a second generation, Tom Servo, get out! Did you notice there's a commercial sign there? I gotta go. Oh, that's great, <laughs> we got commercial outside. sign. Come on! Come on! 
Hey, uh, Joel, I hope we're not interrupting anything. Oh, not at all. Uh, can I get you some ram chips or something? Oh, no, just uh, eight. Yeah, stuff. Couldn't eat another bite. Uh. Okay, well, what can I do you for? Oh, uh, well, we were down in the galley playing freeze tag, and uh, we started wondering about that goofy mutant Charlie Callis guy in the film. You know, that bespectacled weenie that no one would dance with? Right. What's the story on right. him? Right, I think I know what you mean. Camba, could you put up frame 2325, and uh, I think it's somewhere around there. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's the guy. Look at him. Poor sap. Probably has a family. Yeah, so, Joe, what's the point of having this guy in the film? What's his purpose? Well, I thought you might want to know, so I got us all goofy hats to wear. Oh, okay. Everybody gets one, and you get this one. And I got myself right. some glasses. You guys can't wear glasses because you don't really have eyes to speak of. And then the goofy head is the goofy friend is the guy who wears his hat sideways like this and always gets killed first in the haunted house. Like, guys, guys, hey, this isn't funny anymore. Guys. Oh, yeah. so it's like, guys. Hey, guys, come on. Guys. Don't do it. Yeah, you got it. Cool. Hey, Joel, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, okay, so like, uh, what else does he do? What's his point, though? Well, the goofy guy is around to irritate the audience, so they build up a real lot of resentment, so nobody's hurt when he gets off. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Now, let's end up with the goofy dance, okay? Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Anyway, you're catching on. Anyway, I thought it's almost time for the experiment to get done with it. I thought maybe we could do some letters, okay? Yeah. All right, let's see here. Let's see. This one is from Cheryl Watson in Shreveport, Louisiana. And she says, Camba, could you put it up on the screen? To the man and the two robots, I love your show. I came home one Saturday night and tuned on the TV. Turned on the TV. I had no idea what I was watching, but it was hilarious. Wow. So I didn't care. Normally, I watch Saturday Night Live on Saturday, Ooh. but now I watch wow. MST 3000. Live from hey. space, it's us. Right. Anyway, we got one more here. And Cambot, you want to put this one up on the screen there? Good. Oh, this one is from a woman named D. Says, Dear Joel, Servo, and Crow, greetings, guys. Uh, Joel, you are one talented human, and I'm glad you decided to give Crow and Servo a free will. Well, thanks for noticing. And uh, Crow, Servo, I love you, little bots. Keep on doing those group parodies of those moldy, oldy movies, okay? I love your little bot, too. Stroke of Genius. Neither. And that's from a woman named We. Cool. Love We. That's love us, We. I think. I think it's us. Anyway, so. Cambot, why don't we put up the information for the Information Club? And Tom Servo, you want to give them our address? That's right. It's the MST 3000 Information Club, P.O. Box 5325, uh, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Be the smartest guy on your block. Have the biggest brain on your block by becoming a member of the MST 3000 Information Club. Anyway, that's the end of the experiment, sirs. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, I think we should keep the Mamie Van Doren films to ourselves. And I think you should file this. Until next time, double stuff. Thirty seconds to commercial side. Hey everybody, it's me, it's Joel. I'm marooned out in outer space and now you're trapped in the vacuum with me. The robots are throwing me a little party today. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Uh, we're expecting a call from the evil scientist who shot us into space for the invention exchange. But until then, we're going to party like it's 1990. Commercial sign in 5, 4, 3, 2. Commercial sign now. We're going to be back in a matter of seconds. So stick around. I spiked this punch with anyway. It's uh, 10W30 and Tang. Oh. oh, act like your parents are home. The scientists are calling. Come in, Joel, my little free floating clam bake. <gasps> hey, sir, what happened to you? Well, we had a little mishap in, in the lab this week. We were trying to make a cold fusion Walkman, and I, I don't know what happened, but well, you see what happened. And anyway, well, Dr. Forrester will be here in a second. He's just trying to make himself look presentable. Just make with the invention exchange, wild boy. Oh, okay. Well, this is an invention in honor of the party today that the robots are throwing. When I was a boy, I used to play with one of these. All right. And now, uh, 
I'm a man. All right. Uh, what's your invention, sir? It's... never mind. Are you okay, Clay? Yes, Larry. Remember, it's all in the name of science. Well, <clears throat> Joel, I guess our uh, little experiment this week is going to be a powerful healing salve that will allow us to regain our rugged good looks. Maybe our hair. Nothing wrong with my hair, Larry. Jeepers. You guys look like something from a Wes Craven's children's book. Mm. Thank you. Well, your film today, Joel, is called Black Scorpion. It's a Mexican film with effects by Ray Harryhausen, the man who brought you the seven voyages of Sinbad. It's filled with blue screen action and jerky monster movement, but at least there's no recognizable talent in it. <laughs> Enjoy. Yep. All right, as you guys have probably noticed, most of the people in this cast are from Mexico, and I thought it'd be nice to take advantage of that to have a little cross-cultural learning experience, all right? Complete with subtitles? Right, that's right, Cam. Cool. You're going to put the subtitles up on the screen, interpreting the language of our southern brethren. Now, uh, we're not that good at it, but we're trying to learn, and hey, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Oh, we sure think so. That's right, muchachos. You want some uh, refritos? No, I'm no. I'm stuck. No, 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 no. Mm. no I'm well, oh, guilty. You don't know what you're missing. It's time to talk about the film. El Dando Cinemato es la preparo en moto cambrio. Mi casa es su casa. Donde esta tu? El gato y moto e moto. <laughs> Introduco el piñate. Oh, kitty. El la plaza del domingo e Carmen Miranda el moto brio e con chili con carne este tu Jose Cuervo por favor. Wait. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, pass me a flour tortilla, will you? Are you sure you don't want some green sauce with this, oh, Crow? No, no, I hate green. Mm. don't understand it at all. Well, we'll go through it again one more time, okay? All at right. approximately the same time every day, Joel goes into his cabin, stretches out horizontally on his bunk, and closes his eyes. Yeah, and, and then he holds perfectly still and shuts down. No, except it's not a complete shutdown, because every now and then he rolls over and he'll say things like, Oh no, Mr. French, Buffy didn't hide the cat. Or, or oh yeah, one time I heard him yell, Don't stop, don't stop. Right, but that's not the weird... Gypsy, Gypsy, we're busy here. It's not the weird part, it's really not. He'll get up, he'll walk into a little closet, and he makes water. Yeah, and what does he do with it? He flushes it out into space, so <laughs> <Yeah>. figure. <laughs> It'd be like if we were to just uh, drain hydro fluid to jettison it into space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cute girl. Uh, go take a powder, huh? Okay, here's a paradox for you. He's programmed to grow hair on his face, right? But yeah. every time he gets up from his bunk, he cuts it off. Yeah, right. And then it grows back again the next day. What does he do? He cuts it off again. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those logically strange loops, some sort of bizarre non-Euclidean human projection pattern which makes no sense. Leave me some sort of hidden... Oh, I tell you, buddy, human nature is hard to think of figure. Oh, we got movie sign, let's go! Hey, everybody, my name is Joel. Hey, everybody, my name is Joel. Welcome to the Sandline of Love. Today we have... I, I think his voice is a bit higher, sir, but more like this. <clears throat> hey, sirs, what's the experiment for this week? Well, yeah, that, that's pretty good, but he tends to roll his R's a little bit more like uh, like this. Hey, what are you guys uh, up to, anyway? Wow, that's perfect. That sounds just like him. <clears throat> Ixnay, Crow. Uh, Ixnay and the old J. He's what? <clears throat> oh, uh, right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, just doing our little tribute to the genius behind the character effects in this film. Yeah, that black scorpion is terrific. It's very realistic. Oh, and you know who the creator of the stop-action animation was? The one and only Willis O'Brien. Oh, we thought it was Ray Harryhausen. Oh, that's a good guess, but actually the great-granddaddy of them all was Willis O'Brien. Oh. Yeah. 
He started the whole thing, actually. He's the guy who brought to the screen such great uh, science fiction characters as King Kong and Mighty Joe Young. Oh, yeah, well, uh, didn't he also do a bunch of those dinosaur movies? Right. Yeah, he did uh, something like a Valley of the... Valley of the Mist, right? <gasps> and you'll be surprised to know that a very young uh, stop animation animator was on the scene just learning from Willis O'Brien, and that man was Ray Harryhausen. Oh. And he also worked on Mighty Joe Young. Oh, so that's why we're confused. That's right. But you guys did a great job on this model. Thank you. Hey, Cam, I'll bring it in a little bit. It's almost time to go to commercial sign. Um, we'll be right back, everybody, right after commercial sign. Time for our favorite segment. Boy, that was oh, we finally got through wow. that one. It's the end of the experiment, and it's time for our favorite segment of the show when we get to read some of the really great fan mail we've been getting up here on the satellite of love. It's juicy self-indulgence. Yeah, it's great. Cool. And uh, this first one comes from a Kel Kevin Covey. Let's put that up on the screen, Cambot. And Kevin writes, I enjoy watching MST3K very much. Uh, the old 50s and 60s black and white horror and science fiction movies are a passion of mine. The worse they are, the more I like them. Anything that gets more than a one-star rating in the TV guide is too good to be watched. Well, that says a lot for our show, doesn't it, you guys? Yeah, that's a lot about self-abuse. Yeah, too. Kevin L. Covey. The next one we've got is uh, addressed to you, Crow. It's from Tony Me? Pepdart from Palo Alto. He says, uh, Dear Crow, let's have an extreme close-up here on Crow as I read this. Dear Crow, I think you're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> I find your commentary, for the most part, insightful and relevant. Mm -hmm. There are times, however, when it appears as though you are forcing mm -hmm. the issue. Ha, psych! And uh, just trying a little too hard. I understand the frustration you must feel, given the fact that you are such a unique entity in your field. Uh, true, I'm an artist. You, you know, must, subject to moods. You must feel as though your cronus somehow stands out as a glaring defect, lessens your cre credibility in the public mind. Because of this, you sometimes talk simply to be heard. Simply to say, hey, no, I I'm don't Crow. think so. I don't I just talk that. simply to be heard. Sim I have a reason behind my talk. Simply to say, hey, I'm Crow. Look at me. And this, my friend, is dangerous stuff. I sense you are slightly ill at ease of being the only Crow host on TV. By trying to prove to the others that you are indeed capable of the task at hand, you actually do damage to your own cause. I um, realize the pressure you are under and wish thanks. only the best for you and Servo. Uh, that's enough. I think that's great. Thank you. These remarks were not intended to be scathing, but rather as helpful aids to your future success. Yeah, uh, thank scoring. you very much. This is great. So I love that's this from part Tony Papadard. And uh, what thanks, do you think Tony. Of the, loser. What do you think of the experiment, sir? Take it easy there, you two. What about the address? Oh, the address, we always forget that, don't we? Uh, do you want to do a Tom Servo cam? I'll put it up on the screen for the folks on Earth. It's the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Have the biggest brain on your block. Well, that's it, sirs. What do you think? I think the swelling's going down. Yes, and I think you should file this. Here. Until next time, Mr. Skin-On Wiener.